If I had like a face cam, you'd just see me vibing right now because uh, I, I, I'm always, I'm always grooving to this. It's so good. Uh, oh, this is a mature game, and then I get an ad on my own stream. Lovely. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is a BNR our stream today on this fine. 30, 30? 9th of October 2023. I hope you're having a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, I cannot vouch that my stream is apparently working. I go to the page. There it is. There it finally is. Took its time. Um, dude, I, I swear, and real talk, if you are a person who gets affected by, um, like just disruptive advertising to the point that you cannot load any content anymore legit like like do whatever you have to do don't feel bad don't feel like oh i gotta disable the ad block because otherwise being that doesn't get ads it's fine don't worry um <laughs> so yeah i hope you're having a wonderful week uh it's been wonderful normal sydney weather uh let's get this game booted up before the song ends in 15 seconds very very tense very close here we go uh, there it is. Hey! Uh, good old night dive. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you're having a wonderful, uh, week. I have had... For many thousands we, we of get, years, we get it. it's, it's, the Shadow it's Man, Shadow Man. I know, I know, it's Shadow Man. Shadow Man! The remaster. Um, yeah, in the last, uh, in the last stream, this was basically the beginning of the game all the way until we've gotten... Uh, 15 of the Dark Souls, as well as sort of a fair bunch of the collectibles. Uh, like we've been in half of the level, well maybe not half of the levels, but we've been in a fair number of the levels. There's still some Dark Souls you can go out and find in various other levels. Um, I think the main thing I was seeking was, uh, we need to get five Dark Souls for the, um, for the fifth level, so that we can then Go back to, if you can see, the flambeau is on the, f uh, there's a five gate on the path to the Temple of Fire. And that will be important to get. Um, there is also the poignet. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm gonna need that. <laughs> I'm just kind of saying stuff. We can see that there's two Dark Souls available in both of these two locations. That might be good. Uh, since I'm at 15 Dark Souls, I guess let's go back to the Prophecy and... Uh, there's a fun page which puts it in numbers, so I don't have to count tallies, but, uh, one, two, four, eight, that means I basically just hit the fourth level, and I would need eight more, so, uh, let's just go back for the, uh, the poignet in the coffin gate. We might as well. There's no wrong way to really do this game. You're gonna, you're gonna just go around, you're gonna do the things that you think you can get, the only real wrong way is if I start taking forever, which may happen. Uh, these enemies are going to keep coming back, and that's going to get kind of annoying. Uh, since it's been a week, I'm going to try to remember off the top of my head where that four gate was as well. Uh, but yeah, no. Nah, life's been chugging along. Life's been chilling, grilling, all the good stuff. Um, I'm in that fun, fun bit. I usually don't talk about work. Uh, I'm in that fun bit where... Uh, my work, I'm doing things I've never done before. And that's always, um, you know, like, fun, a bit, uh, scary, actually rather terrifying. But ultimately, like, I, like, if I've been very candid about it to everyone, where it's like, yeah, like, you know, sometimes I don't know what I'm doing, but everything I do is one step towards getting there. And I'm not, like, like, it's not like I'm goofing things up for everyone. It's just, I'm asking, like questions and I'm taking like 10 steps to do it where someone who knows exactly what to do will take one step. Uh, we're looking for the four gate. If you see the four gate, I think we're back out too much. I think the four gate is inside the... Yeah, it might be inside the bit. Might be easier just to walk back. definitely don't remember the four gate being inside the temple itself. Uh, if that map is mildly, like, uh, correct, it's probably noting that, uh, there's a thing up here to find. Probably up the very top, and I don't even know if I explored all these little side crevices. I don't think I even did. 
So if I go up here, uh... Yeah, okay, this is just a room where a guy starts pooping on the ground and I definitely went in here. And I'm gonna need an item to get in there, don't worry. Uh, but it must have been one on the other side. Yeah, you see, there's a door on the other side. That might be important. Uh, yeah, no, we're just continuing on and, and uh, grabbing more Dark Souls and all that jazz. Hey, yeah, this looks good. Have we pushed this before? Maybe not. I love how sparkly this fire is as well. <laughs> it's very, uh, very fun. Here we go. We step out over here. Watch out for the poopy guy. Let me shoot him as well. Here we are. And don't worry, there's like, there's a lot of options of places you can go to. Like, I think it was noting that there was a place, um, we can still kind of navigate and, and find, but check this out. This is, uh, they didn't even, <laughs> they didn't even give you a name because this is uh, an item, I guess a passive ability that you've got. This isn't even the toucher, this is the, the poignet. The poin? Uh, pointers of the point is that whenever there is um, a waterfall of some variety, you're actually able to climb up it now, which is very nice. Uh, you may be thinking, is this water all the time? Uh, maybe. But there's going to be a couple of Dark Souls that you'll find. Dark Souls. It's not really used in a ton of areas. It's, it is a bit niche. Unlike fire, which is very easy to put everywhere. Waterfalls, maybe not so much. And I think that's pretty much the only thing you can- Oh wait, no, 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 sorry. There's, there's one other place uh, in this uh, level, which I'll navigate- I don't know. We'll, we'll find the way to get back up to the top uh, without warping back. Do it the old-fashioned way. Um, but there's two waterfalls in the uh, kind of middle of the map, if you remember off the top of your head. I don't know. I don't know if this item is actually needed. I can't recall any important, like, level where it's like you just can't access most of it without a waterfall climb. So I think it is very optional, but, um, optional nonetheless, it had a Dark Soul behind it. But yeah, if you go back into this room, uh, we're gonna need to take out every single one of these guys. This is gonna get very annoying, and the audio is peeking up the wazoo in my ears. It's gonna be a turn down the audio on my end. Oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, yeah. No, the world's going pretty alright. Uh, October's still. Well, I, I say the world's going pretty alright, but, uh. You know, when, <laughs> there's always gonna be something that goes wrong, so. Uh, for all of you in various affected locations, no matter who you are, uh, no matter if people think, you know, certain people need to pick sides, just, I don't know, every ma everyone be safe if you're, if you're in certain, you know, critical areas. Uh, and to, uh, to soften the mood of some variety, uh, I'm very sad, uh, because, uh, Counter-Strike is sort of... I don't know, Counter-Strike's a bit of a weird game. Counter-Strike is not the right game to, to pop off after indirectly mentioning a certain real-world event. Um, but uh, I would like to, to know, I talked about Counter-Strike on the last stream, and I particularly am losing all my health. Uh, by the way, yeah, that's just casually a pathway that leads back into here. The problem is that all these sisters are always awoken, so the moment you go anywhere close to any of them, they're gonna sort of follow you around, which is gonna get a very annoying. Uh, but we'll just climb this other waterfall, and then I can be like, cool, I've gone up both waterfalls, I never have to go up them again. That's the fun thing with most of these uh, items that you unlock. It's not a lot of times you need to really chain them together. It's like you got a beaten path, and you'll just see that, yes, you do indeed need to use this item to get there. This one's a little bit less, less eventful. But there's two Kettos, and that's all that matters, so... 
Uh, also, with this, you'll see that there's six Dark Souls in the Temple of Life, just casually? Um, if anything, maybe I should go back... Nah, the Asylum's kind of annoying when you don't have... Yeah, the Asylum's kind of annoying. We'll go to the Temple of Life. I think I'll probably be the easier one. Just because, yeah, I know the ones in the, um, in the Asylum is like, ah, oh, there's so much lava that needs to be involved. Uh, we don't have enough for a Caddo giveaway yet, and I don't think we'll have that 200, um, anytime soon, so don't worry about that. But there's definitely a handful of Dark Souls that you can find now that you have the ability to touch, touch fire, like that, because I jumped poorly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mentioned Counter-Strike 2 last stream. Um, Counter-Strike 2 is, um, it's getting updates. They are definitely addressing and fixing everything, which is a good thing. All the complaints I had, uh, mostly about the day one version, um, are either being addressed or, uh, hey, you know, they haven't just idled. The game's not just sitting there in a weirdly broken state. Um, there are some things, also, you know there's more enemies than there last time? Or than last time? Without the van, it completely inverses the meaning. Um, but I'm pretty sure if you go over here, and if you recall, there was this block here, which now we can push. And very conveniently, there's a... There's a Gobi. Oh, a Gobi. More Dark Souls. You gotta collect them all. It's also a kiddo, just for good measure. I think there's more stuff in here. There's no radar or really anything for Dark Souls and especially the uh, Kiddos, so you're gonna have to go off your intuition to find all the goodies. Uh, but yeah, I would like to make note of, um, of a, uh, actually it literally came out in the last 24 hours. There's a uh, Gamers Nexus video uh, talking about Counter-Strike 2 uh, scaling performance with different CPUs. Now, there's definitely some things to know and iron out with uh, Counter-Strike 2 at its current, you know, incarnation. There's definitely a lot of uh, teething issues. I express I have problems with the... Uh, I, that one. I express problems with the shader compilation and how, uh, you know, anytime I scope in on any of the, the scoped rifles, I get real bad hitching for the first time on every map, and then it's fine, but then this will happen again if I close the game. It usually happens before I reopen the map. Uh, I'm actually thinking there's no... Yeah, I can't think of any other place on the way. This was a pretty linear path. Like, I might as well walk all the way down to the end. But I'm thinking, yeah, this is a... I don't know. This is a very straightforward path down into the, the hole with this boss and down the bottom. Nah, no, nothing to climb. That's the thing, is that you gotta think of where you can use your items. I definitely know there's, you know, there's five more Dark Souls available apparently. Um, I definitely know there's a lot, like, before. I just knew of that one off the top of my head, so. Let's stab this stick in, turn the other way. I definitely know of one place and maybe all the Dark Souls will be over there, so. Let's navigate. Let's go there. Did they also say there was a shadow gate? Don't really have to address these enemies. They're just chilling. They're not really chilling. They're throwing poop at me, so... Uh, in that Gamers Nexus video that just came out, uh, they particularly... Um, well, or Steve. I don't know if Steve do does all the work for some of these videos. Um, does he have credit to the end? I don't know if he does. Uh, but... Uh, he notes that in um, in his testing that uh, the 13900K in particular was subject to some real bad 1% low stutters. Uh, or at least just poor frame pacing. I don't know if he used the term stutter in this case. Um, but definitely poor frame pacing. Uh, he then showed a chart which uh, had a couple of, you know, had two kind of, you know, why is my brain trying to save red lights? Uh, red flags. Um, the first one is yes, indeed. The 13900K on his results has a, uh, an average of somewhere around, like, I think it's around 380 FPS on his certain test scenario. But, uh, 
it's uh it's got you know one percent lows of like 200 fps and 0.1 percent lows of 100 which is you know rather significant usually your one percent lows shouldn't have such a wild delta uh, at least on its own compared to other processors um so that's the red flag uh but the other thing i noted in that chart which was unmentioned in the video was the 7950X3D also had, by the way, this is a water ball. Oh my gosh, really? I just wanted to, I just wanted to get up. I just want to get up. Just let me climb. Uh, the 7950X3D, in the exact same chart, had also really bad 1% loads. Like, the same rock. It was a very good performing card on its, or good process on its averages. Also, I'm a, I'm a little on the fence about, like, process of testing for me. For, uh, games. It's good to know, but as a buyer, I can easily summarize every single processor by just going, if it's newer, it's better. The, be the better cores, the better, you know, time you have with games. There will be things like, oh, the X3D CPUs do better, but then we've got this example, the 7950X3D, where it too has terrible frame pacing. I love how up this uh, waterfall, by the way, is just this whole little side room, and that's the, the kind of metroid -y part of these, uh, of, uh, this game is, uh, as you gain items, you'll get abilities like that, which you can use to effectively encounter these new areas in these, uh, levels you've already been in. This level, it's like, oh, there's only, like, there's 13 Dark Souls, there must be lots of secret areas, but then you'll find that there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff just tucked away, hidden away. So I've got this nice, like, also, by the way, I just want to know, when I was uh, using the um, the, the kind of like free cam cheat to find or to fly through and get a screenshot for the um, thumbnail for yesterday or last last week's stream, I noticed that the, um, the tower in the back, like there's a lot of tunnels in this game and there's effectively a rendering loading screen between the tunnels. Um, <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of the times when the background completely changes as you go through the tunnel. Like, particularly the um, the tower. It does a good job, like, when I'm standing right here, it's like, yeah, you know, I can't be looking at both directions at the same time right here, for example. And also, I'm in another indoor room in here. But, like, there's times when it's like, you can just spot that, like, that tower in the back is just suddenly, like, a lot closer. Because the game wants you to be closer. <laughs> It wants you to feel like you've journeyed a lot closer to the tower than you really just did. It's not even that the tower is, like, fake in, like, where it is. It's just literally, like, well, it's pretty far away. It's got, we gotta make it a bit taller. Um, I don't know why I was expecting it to be, like, a trampoline. Another day, another Dark Soul. So I got 15 in the first stream. We'll try and get them a bit faster. This is not going to be an 8 stream uh, game if you divide 120 by 15. Where are we already at? 19? We've already got 4 in 20 minutes. So not particularly a ton faster, but sure. Uh, I'm just going to swim around a bit here because I know there's Kato's just chilling in these nooks like that. You see? You see? Gonna get thrown off. Uh, also in the chart, if you pay very, very close attention, is that most of the processes, like, in the chart, are within 360 and 400 FPS. And at 1080p on the specific test scenario, I think it's in Dust 2, but check the check the video, you'll, you'll see in the chart. Um, a lot of people in the comments were quick to note, you had the FPS max setting on 400, which is the default value. Uh, but the game can run beyond that. I don't know if there's any, like, significant stability problems or whether it's just the average person wastes a lot of electricity when they run the game at a thousand fps when it really doesn't have to um, you realistically will probably never feel more than double the refresh rate and that's if you're trying also you probably don't need double the refresh rate rather you need the game to process like input more like freely during its no render times that's, that's really the solution, um, and that the number of stuck there. The number of in-game ticks is, you know, ideally independent of the frame rate. Uh, you might be able to draw multiple frames for an in-game tick. You might be able to draw 
multiple, well, run multiple picks for an in-game frame. You know? There's lots of ways of going about it, but, uh, I don't know how it exactly works. I remember hearing someone say uh, Counter-Strike 2 is, like, tickless. I'm curious, uh, what they do there, but... I mean, yeah, if you, if you can just base it off every single, like, user input, like, tick-free, just use, like, Lampert blocks and figure out, like, where things happen, where and when things happen, you know, that's that's actually pretty smart. Um, I don't know if they're doing that, though. Uh, but yeah, lots of people noticed that there was an FPS limit on, so, uh, whatever the case, most of these CPUs, you can't exactly compare. We did naturally get the spread that you expect, such as the Ryzen 5800X3D and 7800X3D topping the charts, follow I decided to uh, followed by, um, the 3900K, weirdly enough, with its high, or with its, uh, weird variability, still had good 1% low, or sorry, had good average. Um, then your usual spread of, you know, like, the newer CPUs, and then some older ones, and eventually I think the stack kind of sat at the bottom with a 3600, uh, which is not a new CPU, it's like, you know, coming out of 2017. But it's perfectly like, hey, you know, if you find a 3600 for a very low price, that's a great CPU, like, you know, it's not brand new, it's definitely on the older side, but processors haven't gotten like, or rather, processor demand hasn't gotten really that crazy since. Climb up to the top here, press this button, and it turns this, uh, fan windmill fan. Which is pretty cool. They have electricity down here. This is electrically powered. That, that is 100%, well... I say that knowing full well we've had, like, computers in some of the other levels. Yeah, just remember, no fall damage, don't worry. Uh, gonna crawl through the hole to get back to the previous room. All the way. Uh, moral of the story is, though, this, uh, like, yeah, we go back to the Counter-Strike 2 video. I haven't gone back and replayed the game, and as a 3900K owner, um, I haven't validated whether the actual 3900k has those problems with 1% lows. Um, I also don't know exactly what the Gamers Nexus test setup is, and uh, as much as I was sort of ripping into like, um, during the whole him and Linus Tech Tips fiasco, it's not really much of a controversy, although uh, I had some some rather heated back and forth, so I think it was mostly just, I, I walked on the thing and then it didn't let me jump, but I'm also sort of completely out of it with my right hand apparently. Um, Love that squeaky bridge noise. Yeah, this platform just goes back and forth after you turn that, uh, turn that fan. Turn that windmill. Get to your dark cell, though. Think so it's worth it. So what are we at now? 21? Yeah, 21. Jeez. Only two more until I can get the, get the thing. There's still two dark souls I can get in this level as well. It would be mighty convenient if I could somehow find those. So let's keep crawling through. That will lead me... Actually, there was another exit, so that's cool. Just curious if uh, off the top of my head... They're near here. I'm pretty sure they are. So this uh, other pathway, there's a two uh, waterfalls on this side. And you can clearly see there's another one over there, so... That's where we gotta go. Or rather, you don't have to go, but... This, this game is about exploration. We could be stopping the serial killers, but we're, we're busy climbing the waterfalls. And honestly, or the blood falls, there might be blood falls. Uh, yeah, the rest of the game is next. This video basically goes on about um, the e uh being the uh, parent uh, root cause of why the performance is bad. Uh, because they're like, well, we overclocked, and it didn't improve performance, and then we disabled hyper-threading, and it didn't improve performance, and then we disabled the e-cores, and then it improved the performance. Uh, a lot of people in the replies also said, set the core affinity, or run with the launch parameter, dash threads, eight. Uh, I, again, as a 3900k owner, um, 
I haven't tested. So you're gonna have to take my word that that's what the comments say. Don't, don't, if you're a 3900k owner, don't believe me, and try it for yourself, please, because it's super easy to try. And if you uh, aren't a 3900k owner, well, this doesn't exactly affect you, but definitely note that, uh, like, there are workarounds and things as easy as setting core affinity. While it is something that everyone must learn, it's something very easy to, you know, figure out and learn. And often, I guess with all this equal stuff, it's like a lot of us are in the same boat, which makes it very weird that processors like the 13700K and the 13600K, all of them didn't experience the same problems. Is this an equal problem? Because we have these equal processors that don't have this problem. And then we have the 7950X3D, which does have a mixed core architecture. That was a little weird. Um, it's got a mixed core architecture because you've got eight cores that are, you know, got the 3DV cache and don't clock as high, and eight cores that are and do clock that high. Uh, there's got to be a way that is. Gosh, where's the. Oh, I remember exactly. And unfortunately, it means I'm going to have to walk back. On, yeah, I remember exactly. I mean, I didn't have to walk back. The problem with walking back is that all the enemies are going to respawn. I swear off the top of my head, and someone vouched me if you, you remember this, but like an older patch of this game. Um, the, actually, why am I not like annihilating this guy into oblivion using the goods? Um... But I remember an older patch was like, if you walked to the same map, you would just actually, like, go there. You wouldn't hit a loading screen. I don't know if that was, uh, just me misremembering. A lot of those jazzy arm bangles I've got now, I'll tell you that, though. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, uh, if we can rip into, you know, Linus Tech Tips for having, um, Unrecreatable test passes. I anecdotally, I didn't exactly feel low one percent lows when I tried. Uh, there's a block here. Just casual. Yeah, anecdotally, I didn't feel the one percent lows um, when I was playing. I did feel the stuttering, and perhaps that is what was measured as the one percent low. The power of the dark souls. Hey. I you're now at level 5. I hope you appreciate just completely like ignoring level 4, going straight for the level 5 stuff, because they put all the stuff in here. There's nothing left really to find in this level, but now we can go back to the Temple of uh, Fire Toucher and finally get that one last item that required the 5 uh, to open up. And, uh... I know, I know, you're probably tired of this map again, but, uh... Trust me, this one's worth it, because uh, it's gonna show up a, a bit. So, once we're at level 5... I don't know if this is, like... Someone's probably routed this game as well. Just like Metroid, it's like, if you can route your game... Just like how I did with Metroid Prime. If you can route your game, and you can figure out, like, which items you need to get with, like, the least rooms possible, that will save you so much time when you're playing the game to other people on the internet. Um, but I don't know that for Shadow Man, because I've only beaten it, like, twice. I enjoyed this game. I've only beaten it twice. Uh, but I'm pretty certain it was up here, was it not? Or is that the, the waterfall again? It was this, which led to... There it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Side. Check this out. This is the flambeau, which, as said in the description, is called the, uh, what is it? This is the poignet. What is the flambeau? I think it was earlier. Here it is. The bearer of the voodoo flame. Basically, this is, one, a torch, and two, you can fling it. And it'll actually burn through these, uh, these little, you know... Oh, hi there. Hi there, thanks for chasing me in here. It'll burn these little, uh, I, I can only call parchment, basically? 
think it's parchment. Uh, don't worry about it not being lit up. You can keep throwing fire pretty frequently. Um, but there, yeah, there's a lot of areas in this game where you can use this um, to progress. You'll find a lot of these all over the place, uh, mostly for Kados. Like, as you'll see here, there's no more Dark Souls to get in this level, despite picking this up. But there is... No, actually, I don't think there's any Dark Souls that we couldn't pick up already, at least in a map we've seen, using this. But definitely some Kados, which is very nice. Since you can knock these open, you'll find some Kados. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I, I only rip in the game as Nexus just because this is a little bit of a standard that he sort of set himself. Now granted, he has acknowledged, yes, the FPS cap was on. I don't 100%, I'm not convinced by his, uh, his argument that it is the E cores. Because he's had another high core count processor with the same problem, and he failed to mention it in the video, and he had other E core based CPUs in the video that didn't have the problem, and he didn't test with that. Um, sort of feels like a little bit of a rushed video. I don't know. Not to say, you know, this is not a dig at Gamers Nexus as a person. This is not a, uh, like, you know, kill shot MSI video where it's like, haha, he's destroyed. I'm just saying that, like, people, you know, can be wrong sometimes. <laughs> And it's weird, you'll, I'll, I don't know, you'll disproportionately see Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unbox on, uh, particularly Reddit, Reddit really likes them, uh, all the subreddits, they always pick the videos that, uh, make their product look favorable. It's very interesting that that's the case. Uh, I'm only going up here because I remember one and or two Flambeau spots. Uh, this led back to the, um... To the block, so we already got that, but on the other side there was one that flame. Although I'd probably, since it's only for Kados, we'd probably do one last sweep at the end to pick up all the Kados once I know, once I have all the items basically, because then there's no excuse for not having them. But at least off the top of my head I know I can get this. Oh, this isn't just for a Kado. It's for a... Uh... Awakening Sisters, apparently. But even more importantly, if you walk over here, you'll go, huh, this is just leading back into this room. Oh, but standing yeah. here is a, uh, a secret cheat. We get the uh, we get the Flame Grilled, which lets you always be on fire, which I actually used in my original run because it means that it lights up the dark areas near you. It's very distracting because I am on fire, but incredibly fun and useful. I just thought that's fun. We don't need that anymore. You know what? We do need to find uh, the path forward. Actually encountering encountering a new level. I know, 33 minutes into a stream and it's like, yeah, you've just been backtracking and picking up like all this stuff. But I already got eight Dark Souls by just going back into an old level. How cool is that? So we'll keep wandering forward and you'll probably see uh, opening a new gate be the, the next agenda, but unfortunately you got to start back at the top every time. You can't use that warp yet, because you can't walk on lava yet, which is painfully obvious that that's going to be how this works. We'll get there, we'll get there. Um, so yeah. Meanwhile, let me rip into another Hardware Unbox video that also came out today. This was a video titled, uh, the eight, uh, PCIe lanes on the 4060 Ti is that it's, uh, oh, I'm probably paraphrasing the title, but it, it pointed out the, the 4060 Ti, uh, particularly the 16 gig model, although the 8 gig model would have the exact same, you know, quirks, uh, hopefully. I don't know, they didn't test with it. Um, and, uh, pointing out that it's by 8 in the face, uh, means that, uh, you know, it will be limiting if you run it on a PCIe 3 machine. Um, well, the, the title didn't even mention PCIe 3, which was what they tested it on. They basically said, is by 8 you know, too limiting if you had half the bandwidth because you run it on PCIe 3? Which is a fair comment to make, because I was like, hmm, ha, you know, who's using PCIe 3 these days? And the answer is, well, anyone on 10th Gen Intel or, uh, um, older Ryzen, 
uh, B450, I think generally only supports PCIe 3. I think B550 supports PCIe 4. Um, yeah, we can go through this door if I want to continue on, uh, which I'm pretty sure if you look at the map, and we see our map on with actually I might as well pick that one up. That guy is nibbling on my feet. Uh, if we go through here, check this out. This is actually um, the second of the L'Eclipse parts, the Les Soleil, Los Soleil. So, uh, yeah, you don't actually need it. There's really no like practical purpose yet until you grab all three. Uh, I think the third one uh, is like La Lame, which is there behind a seven gate, and by that point you're fairly throughout the game. Uh, don't feel like you can, you know, collect all all the pieces of Exodia just yet. But definitely it's interesting that uh, one is behind a three gate and one is basically just plastered right there. This is an area that keeps going on, by the way. This is a remarkably long part of the map and I'll point out exactly what it is after the soliloquy. And deeper still, the morbid mystery entwines. Morbius? What love I ever had for life should find its place in here. Locked within a cankered cell, beset by madmen, chained to hell. Oh, it rhymed. And deeper still, a vast, dark love I find within Asylum's darkly thrumming heart. No love of mine, not mine to love. For twisted is the purity of that finer thing, and I should lay my partly living down to free the world from terror's tyranny. Very poetic. Very nice, Mr. Shadow Man. Uh, so welcome to the Cageways. Uh, I love how, uh, as I keep picking up new items, here is a thing that we cannot really open up yet. This is, this is another one. This one will eternally plague us. This is the very first thing we saw. But yeah, you can use this to actually like help light up this area. Like if I'm just chilling, you know, like here, and I didn't have that thrown. Actually, yeah, particularly if I'm, like, chilling in this, like, corridor. Yeah, it's a bit dark. Open this up, much brighter. Also, just turn on flame grill. Problem solved. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll generally play with the secrets off. Um, there are a lot of uh, flambo uh, doors to open in this uh, area, so picking it up a little ahead of time saves you the effort of backtracking. Um, this is a really, like, strange area. The first time I played this, I was a little confused that this was even the platforming that they intended. Um, you can see that, yeah, okay, there's a bit of a jump here. That makes sense. Sure. We've got a Cado chilling up here. And then it's like, okay, but, like, I'm in here, but... Do a little bit of effort. You can just jump over that. I thought I was breaking the level, but, uh... That is indeed the way the level works. Now you need to take out all these guys, because they're just going to be in the way. Then you can climb this, uh, this rope. Sort of reused in that one, uh, that one asylum level. You know, room number two. We got this lovely building over here, which is incredibly short. We go in, we got a guy, the hook guy. Uh... Yeah, it's just, to, just to continue ripping off that 4060Ti video. Um, it's got the same problem. It doesn't test enough parameters. What they basically did in the video was uh, they set their, um, their Ryzen... I think they had a 7800X3D. Um, they set the... the um, it was either X7, X670 or B650, whatever. Um, they set the PCIe swap mode from PCIe 4 to PCIe 3. That was it. Uh, it is not exactly a test of whether running a graphics card in PCIe 3 configs is necessarily... Like, it, it's not the same because PCIe is just the spec. Different motherboards may implement it differently. The, I would imagine the motherboard with PCIe 4 support... We can't guarantee that it's actually gonna be the same as a motherboard that only has PCIe 3 support. I'm not 100% sure if we can guarantee that. Uh, but even then, there's also some features that you get on PCIe 4 that you don't get on PCIe 3. 
Uh, now, I originally thought Resizable Bar was one of them, but then I realized as well, wouldn't Resizable Bar be a different point? Would people on PCIe 3 disable Resizable Bar by default? Would people on PCIe 4 enable it by default? That's definitely something where you can't just change the setting and claim PCIe 3 is limited memory bandwidth because there's feature differences that people would naturally use. Uh, this just drops you back to the start. Like, this kind of loops around in a weird way, but then this is only like half the level. Like, you, we've actually seen this whole like half of this half side of the level. It's actually not too large an area. And if anything as well, other than that bit at the very, very beginning with the, the pedestals, I don't think there's really any other things that are hidden. Although someone's going to know it's like, oh, there's actually like a secret and you, you haven't picked it up. I don't know, we'll get there. And by we'll get there, I mean I haven't got a list of them, so I don't... I'm going off the ones that I know from memory. Some of them are definitely just like, you gotta know where you gotta go. They're just like spots that you jump towards. Uh, I love this train, by the way. Everyone likes a good train section, even if the train isn't moving while this is going. It's, it's just the fact that it's a train is, you know, points enough. Go. get to the end we got to use the key which will screw you over if you didn't pick up the key and the train starts going away we go that's good fun train going through the tunnel now I'm going to ruin the illusion for you Train's not even going that fast when you think about it. It's a fun animation though. And that just kind of rocks up here. Inside the actual cageways. Part of the same map. I thought this was pretty cool. Now this door opens up and you get the warp. But here's the thing. I'm going to alert these uh, fellows over here. I'm going to make sure that they can walk over closer here. The pathfinding should be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm now going to, you know, flip the train, and the train's now going to go the other way. The animation's basically the same. Like, we'll watch it for a couple of seconds. But it's basically the same thing, just the other way. So, good thing you can skip it. Um, now, for some reason, you can clearly tell these guys are here. In fact, if I'm standing close enough, I'm pretty sure they can hit me. Uh, but I'm very certain... I'm about to ruin the illusion. I'm very certain this train doesn't move anywhere. The rest of the building is directly at the front of the train. That's why these guys were poking through the door. Why exactly do they need you to hit a button, given that there's enough time to load the rest of it? I don't know. Train. That's your answer. So, uh, this area's got, um... A couple of uh, things that you can do and go to down here, uh, but there's a couple of uh, fun things that I know of off the top of my head, uh, particularly uh, if you've got the, uh, well you probably should have the, um, the toucher to be able to touch fire, you can climb on these, which I've already demonstrated. Uh, if you come over here by the way, uh, where the train is meant to continue onwards, because there's another gondola that continues on, if you take a jump, oh, yeah. you'll casually get a secret over there. And you'll die, because of course you will. Uh, this secret is the one... Did we get the player stuff here? Is that the one? I think we already... Damn. Well, that's not Duffy. Oh, we already got this one. Which one did we get? Beta Shadow Man? Paintball. That's what it was. Obviously the greatest feature in all games. It's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Uh, there's a little more over here as well, so don't just discount this area. Although there is definitely more at a later point in time. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Same, same thing with that 4060 Ti video. I don't, I'm not exactly sold on what the video is claiming is the case. I don't think they tested enough of the variables and I don't think they've exactly expressed enough of an understanding of, well, in the case of Counter-Strike 2, it's like, well, there's probably, like you can duck under these. Um, like, the e-cores is definitely a symptom. I don't think that's the fix. 
Um, the real fix would be the game itself improves itself with E-Core, um, you know, reliability. Uh, we definitely, like, when all the Lake first came out, disabling E-Cores was a general fix to a lot of games struggling when more cores were presented. Also, mixed for architecture, they like, they didn't know what to do. It's just the Dark Soul over here. Uh, there's more area over there that we just cannot get to, no matter how hard you try. And, uh, killing yourself is the best thing, unless you're going for that achievement where you don't die. Then it's not the best thing, and you probably shouldn't go this direction. Uh, that gondola will exit to the next level. Um... I'm gonna tr Oh, this is gonna be... That's gonna be obnoxious. Let's go up this way. Uh, there's a wonderful loop you can do around here. Just like the loop outside, there's a loop up here. Very nice. Um, yeah, and I, I guess it's a general thing of like, you know, I don't know, I sometimes rip onto people on the internet for like, oversimplifying or coming to the wrong conclusion. All of these charts are legit, and given that you know they're test set up and they're recreatable, um, that's generally, uh, you know, fine. I don't mind if Gamers Nexus has the FPS limit on, because realistically, most people will. And realistically, I think people would probably, you know, care a bit more about that. Um, you know, having a more realistic use case than one that's just exaggerated just to show the differences between processes. Um, at least in a video particularly about Counter-Strike 2, I probably want a, a more real scenario. Uh, this is going to be a fun jump, but I know it's possible. Oh, nope. Let me just go from up here. That's definitely it. Definitely it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the hardware unbox one, it's like, again, valid testing. I just don't know if the conclusion is quite correct. That's usually been where I have contentions with tech YouTubers anyways. And the reason why I don't really make informative videos, because, uh, spoilers, this is all my opinion and conjecture, and I haven't tested exactly what they're doing. All I am saying is, as me as a viewer, I'm not, I'm not sold that what they've said is actually correct. They're the ones trying to convince me. They might believe it, and that's fine, but... I don't know, like... You know, my experience tells me otherwise in some cases. Like for the rebar thing, I was like, oh, I'm gonna now look up an older video from Hardware Unbox and try and figure out, because they haven't talked about uh, rebar since, um, uh, like March 2022. Um, and it's a different graphics card, it's a 7600 they showed it off with. 7600? Not in 2022, that would have been a, um, 6600. Uh, oh, this area. Yeah, just casually. If you come down here, we've got this kind of fun church area, which is very dimly lit. I think we need to blast some. Oh, come on, come on. There we go. I think we need to blast some fools. Probably need some help. Yeah, that's a fun sound, isn't it? Check it out. It's another retractor. That's our second one. Oh, this person is uh, not waited. You get attacked by one of these uh, witches again. I don't believe it's got it's got nowhere near as much health. It's just here as a casual enemy. Um, but it's good fun that they actually like hyped up these retractor sections. It's just it's tucked away though. Oh no, nope, never mind. There were two of them. Oh, yeah, we're chilling. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, hi there. How you doing? You are very hard to spot in this very dark room. When there was a skybox, it was a lot easier. It was a lot easier before. I don't have a lot of health. Have you noticed? Fortunately, there's lots of health and uh, caddos because we've got enough caddo for a new uh, upgrade at some point. So. Maybe it might be worth going there when I get to the next, uh... I guess the next map warp, because technically this is a fun map warp, because it's... right where you can enter the next level. You, know, you saw what I mean? Like, you have the gondola right there, so... I don't think there's anything else on these higher ledges, and if there is, then whoops. But, pretty certain this is just there, just to... 
have this fun little room. I forget if they added that one in because um uh they probably did. Because the um the remember there were only three levels, three of the serial killer levels, which means this platform comes over, which means uh they only had to put three retractors in the game. So that room might have not existed in the original versions. Someone can correct me on that one. I don't know, it's been a while. What's up, my serial murderer? Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of armchair experts on the internet. Uh, I probably made this whole, like, it's a, it's probably a recurring thing. Someone's gonna super cut. You know, every time Blendo complains about social media, experts on the internet, hardware on box, there's like a bajillion topics where it's like, oh my gosh, how could they think this? And it's like, fairly natural. Like, I get it. it you think you've got a conclusion. That's... I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna sound super cynical and jaded. It's like, nah, oh, man, my opinion's the correct one. These posers on the internet, they don't know what they're talking about. This, there's a lot of dudes down here. You got chainsaw dudes. You got dudes shooting. You gotta be a bit careful. Oh, watch out for that guy shooting behind him. There you go, get some health before that all disappears from me. But yeah, I don't know, does anyone have opinions like that where, not like, you know, you're proving YouTube is wrong, but more just... Also, yes, uh, just know that was a switch that unlocks the way to come up here. If you, because you can, come from the other direction, you can just casually hit a dead end here and you just have to walk back and then you realize that the Dark Soul is casually available this way. Also, hi there, magical staircase. What does this lead to? More enemies. It will probably wreck my day. Not even a Kado up here. This was a pointless walkway. Uh, that's where I was, and... Where did this one go to? No Kado. What a weird, just, corner. It's just here. I hope you appreciate the school bell noise. <laughs> nothing seems... Nothing screams like terrifying more than a school bell. I can't have a school function without a bell. Like, name any other locations you're in that regularly ring a bell. I would say fire station, that's probably a valid answer. What a bloody corridor. Lots of enemies all around here. This is definitely a uh, bit of a gnarly room. There's another guy just up here as well. And you can see the guys with the shields are pain because you'll break their shield off and then they're still committed to running at you. They just take their hits. Uh, oh, this is an interesting bit as well. So you gotta go downstairs and you'll see this lever here. This starts moving this, uh, this cage up above. This is the cage ways, of course, so there's going to be a way for the cages to go. Also, I hope you uh, appreciate the, the wonderful shadows. I mean, it's Shadow Man. It's got to have shadows, right? Uh, my trick is you jump here, and then you can jump back. And grab the, the rail behind that, uh, that one. But don't worry, you got to do it again. You gotta climb across just so you can land on this ledge. This little guy chasing me down there. How cute. There we go. One more Dark Soul for the collection. How many are we at? 26? 28? Oh my gosh. <laughs> nearly double at the end of the last stream, and that was a that was nearly a three-hour stream. They're slow at the beginning, but you start picking up a ton of them. 
So I think that's this room done. You just gotta tailgate past these doors. When you hear the when you hear the bell, you're in. Uh, that's the ledge I was on before. I don't think you can jump down though from there, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, speaking of experts, uh, that was a tweet I saw. Uh, basically, someone mentioning the um, uh, the painted yellow ladder and I think uh, one of the um, might have been Resident Evil 4. People, yeah, people had like a big problem with uh, like telegraphing things that especially weren't telegraphed in the original versions of the games. Like painting ladders yellow so players would see that there's a yellow ladder. Uh, in that example of the yellow ladder, um, uh, like I'm not saying like the criticisms are invalid or undeserved because there's definitely a degree of there's a bunch of games that do really dumb it down. People joke, uh, joke about the journalist mode, um, you know, Dean Takahashi playing, uh, um, Cuphead is, you know, the greatest example of, uh, oh my goodness, wow. Like, it's not even, like, I don't want to dig on him for not being able to play the game, it's a dig on, he's not playing it at a level that would represent, like, you know, how I would play it, and therefore I cannot trust his opinions on whether he will recommend the game or not, because I'm not confident that he has shown the game to a, to a good level, and has experienced the game to a good level. Um, different people will, will experience things in different ways, so, you know, he's got an opinion. That's valid. Check it out, by the way, we're back up the top. I know, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's all the Dark Souls that we can pick up. Yeah, just enter the Dark Engine. Here we go. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get the Cados to the, uh, bit just to get some more health while we're at it. Because I'm gonna walk right back to that spot and then immediately go to the, um... Ooh. Hi. <laughs> I apparently landed. Um... But yeah, it, it's definitely one where, you know, there is... There are some games that dumb it down too much. Or, even to some degree, have the option to dumb it down too much. I'm just like... If it wasn't particularly a problem back then, I'm not really too sure why it needs to be changed. And if you say, oh, but we just threw it in, well then, no, there's gotta be a reason why you threw it in. There's gotta, there's always a reason. And if there's not a reason, you're not doing a great job. I don't know. You should always have a reason for everything you do, right? You can just say it's more inclusive. Just say something like that, I guess. The life force is strong within me. Life force is strong. We've now got seven blips of health. Time to walk back. Come on, I'm apparently a slowpoke. So all these enemies are going to respawn, but uh, conveniently, yes, the end of the level is just here. And, uh, yeah, you can go in there right away. You don't have to actually explore really any of the first part of the level or the second part of the level. And this will lead into... That's right, more level. Unfortunately, there's no soliloquy into this one. Uh, welcome to, uh, this is, actually, this is probably not gonna highlight too much. Oh, did my controller disconnect? I think it did. Oh my gosh, classic. Let's, uh, let's make sure I drop the save just so I, when I unplug the controller it doesn't, uh, doesn't completely die on me. It's more a retroarch problem, but, again, I like how I've gone through multiple controllers, and, uh, they will just casually like start dying on me. Um, although granted, I'm still using an Xbox One controller. There's Xbox, uh, like, the series style controllers that they use a USB-C plug. Um, I'm still on, yeah, the old Xbox Ones that have the, the uh, micro USB cable. I feel like that just loses contact every so often. Luke, is that you, bro? Bro. This way, Mikey. Luke. That's right, the come on slowpoke just comes in. Uh, this is a fun picture, although it made me think, hmm, is, why is his mouth bloody still in in this picture? Because you're going to see, also he draws Dark Souls. The biggest Dark Souls fan. Uh, train. Curse symbols. That's good fun. Very fun, healthy for a child. Nice. Keep chasing him through some rooms. Help me, Mikey! Luke! You gotta help me, Mikey! They're gonna hurt me! 
It's okay, Luke. I'm here now. Stay there. I'm coming to get you. A real I don't know why his mouth's got you blood on it. Luke, come back. Luke! So casually, yes, you can walk here. Uh, this is the engine block. Uh, home to 15 of the Dark Souls. Probably, I think, the most out of any of the levels we've seen so far. Um, you'll see it says shut down piston, but uh, basically your goal with the engine block, and this is... Uh, Spoilers, this is actually the end of the game, but in order to get to the end of the game, you gotta walk through all these pistons. Each piston can only be turned off via a, uh, a lever, or via some dials, uh, and you can see that there are some dots next to engine block in this map. That's five warps, all from the uh, live side areas. Uh, although one of them you can access right now. Uh, there are six pistons, so you can access one of the pistons right now. I shall walk to it. I don't particularly think there's... Oh, there's no Kados in this one. There's literally nothing to demonstrate other than me walking to the end and then showing you... Oh, whoops. Ain't that fun? No Kados. Okay, are you ready for probably the worst like bit of level design in this entire game there's a guy on the other side there and you'll see he starts shooting at you you cannot you cannot climb across this until you have dealt with that guy on the opposite side it is the worst enemy placement and i'm still sad that it's in the game but <laughs> all they gotta do is just have that guy not there because you're gonna start climbing across and he starts appearing and you've got no time to, to shoot him no time to pick him up. Yeah, I mean, you can keep exploring. I hope you appreciate the child laughter and the uh, lack of being able to see anything in this map, apparently. Got it. It's lots of these little side rooms. Uh. Yeah. Uh, point is, as we're making fun of journalists... Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to make fun. Um, the, the, the part of the picture with the ladder... Now, I'm not a level designer. I have, I've never worked on a video game, but, uh, someone would go... There's gotta be, like, oh, you know, we paint it yellow because we need to highlight the ladder to people. You see what I mean? That guy is gonna hit you, then you drop down, and then you can't see him. The music does kick in, though, I'll tell you that. But, like, legit, like, you can't do anything about that guy. Um, also a drill, baby crying, dude this soundtrack is bopping. I think this actually stops before I can even get there, I might need to hit him with this. All of my shots are too weak, he can shoot further than I can because that stuff hits the wall. I don't think it's worth even going over there because honestly, like what, mm, nah, we'll commit, we'll commit. That, that is just such a painful enemy placement. I've never been able to get over it. Someone, if you know how to defeat this enemy, you know, way sooner than I can, please tell me. Because, yeah, this is just, this is just pain that he's showing at. There we go, we got him. We got him. It's all good. I'm bopping my head. Seriously, this music is great. Not all the music, I think, was, like, even in the original game's release. I'm not sure if they did get the original composer back to either, like, keep, you know, like, remix, remaster old tracks, or, uh, even compose new tracks for this release. Or they just got someone who composes just like the other guy. Thank the Lord. Look at these dials, they're going crazy! Oh yeah, uh, that's a thing down there. I don't think you even walk in there, I think it's just like a show. That's the part that always confused me, was seeing other, like, rooms like that. And thinking it was part of the level room. Here's the part. So, 
we're clearly at one of the pistons. In fact, the first piston. You're presented with these uh, three things. I guess little tubes. You can put the key in one and it'll raise it up. You can put it in again and it'll raise it up. You can put it in one last time and it'll go all the way down to the bottom. And you can do the same for all three of them. What this is, is a code. There's a three digit code, but the digits are, you know, from one to five. So there's only 125 different possibilities. You can try all of them, you'll probably eventually guess it. Uh, but you don't really know what the code is. So let's talk to Nettie. Nettie will give us a tip. <laughs> Nettie, Luke's in the asylum. He was calling out to me. Nettie, he needs me to help him. Hold on there, Mike. You can't be sure of anything you see or hear in that place. Try and stay focused on what you gotta do. But he's my kid brother, Nettie. Luke's my kid dead. brother as opposed to my adult your brother. Stupid numbskull head. The evil's using you. Can't you see that? Trying to weaken your resolve. Just get the dark souls and stop screwing around. Ooh, that told me. Get the hell out of here, Mike. We ain't got much time left. This guy has two modes, apparently. Oh, apparently I gotta talk to Nettie again. Excuse me? Nettie's got super important things to tell me, apparently. So much so that I gotta walk outside. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. I followed the Dark Souls trail into the asylum, but where the hell are the five? They're in this world, Shadow Man. Five this one. mortal men touched by the. We're really getting that repeat dialogue, didn't we? Someone's. Uh, yeah, if, if, if I just skip lines of dialogue that just. You know, we didn't already play. Whoops. Uh, someone's probably got the cutscenes of What's all. What's up, Michael? You look like you've seen a ghost. Which I suppose is understandable, considering where we are. Luke was in the asylum, Jody. He was calling out for me. I don't know, but maybe I was just imagining it. You know, as the bird said, there are more things in heaven and dead side than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Shakespeare said that? Well, not exactly, but near enough. I need to find out whether Luke's in there and why. You do that, Michael. I wish I could help. Honest, I do. But, well, you know how it is. He's just a snake. What can he do? Uh... Yeah, that's uh, that's that. There's not really anything really you can do, so we'll just keep going. I know it says talk to Johnny more. But we'll just continue on. I know, right? It was like we got the the level five after 23 Dark Souls. I guess I'm at 29. How many Dark Souls do you need to get the next level? Uh, da, 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 12. We need 12. So what is that? 12 after. 1523, that'd be 35. We got another six, we're halfway there. But definitely there's not enough Dark Souls to get now. You're gonna need a whole new level. Fortunately, there's still plenty of levels left in this game, so. Don't sweat your don't sweat your socks. More Shadow Man action, right back at you. Uh so yeah, I'm not a I'm not a game designer, but uh, yeah, if I didn't want to color a uh, a ladder in yellow, my biggest thing I would say is well the ladder is up against like a brick wall. It's not exactly brick. It's like big like stone, um, like big stone bricks basically. Uh, and the ladder, the horizontal rungs and the vertical like lines, sort of vector wise line up with the um the, the wall in the back. Uh, so, I can imagine, you know, maybe someone, like, swinging the camera around doesn't actually see the ladder because, vector-wise, it, you know, it gets mixed up in the head with the wall. To that, I would then say, well, next to the ladder is other construction equipment, broken scaffolding, things like that. Imagine if there was just a plank of wood behind the ladder. Therefore, the wall is not a problem because there is a plank of wood in front of the ladder. We need level 6 in order to keep going on, so... Time to go down another bridge. And yes, that's right, another soliloquy. What further horrors shall I find within this terrible place? Where in a time before these catastrophic events, I would have willingly accepted pallid imitations of such horrors. 
I now have come so far, my sensibilities lie benumbed by all I see. I do not embrace this horror, but rather stand immobile beneath its self-indulgent gaze. Uh, Self-indulgent might be the right word. I fear the god within the machine is no longer there. There's in Machina. Ooh. Uh, I believe I am walking on a cow god now. Nice climb. Uh, but we got this wonderful kind of pool here, and don't worry, there's nothing. You can't go quite up there just yet. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot brighter underwater. You know, the underworld do be like that. Or, uh, flop side. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a level designer, but uh. I think that modern games can be a lot more subtle than just having a ladder. Or oh, sorry, not, not just having like, a ladder. Not just painting things bright colors, because painting things bright colors, in fact, really anything, it sort of needs a world reason. You have to sort of think to yourself, like, why is this ladder painted yellow? Because no one paints the ladders yellow. Even in spooky horror world. So, come up with a valid reason why you've painted something like that. Again, have a reason. Come up with a reason for stuff. Now, I'm, you know, some of this level design is a little wacky. I'm not saying, you know, in this day and age, it's like, why exactly is the level design like that? Oh, I saw Shadow Man looking down, and I was like, ah, oh, he knows. He knows there were just barrels that had nothing in them. Got it. I don't even need to come back down. Dang it. Uh. So, the combination of the, the tweets, because of course this is Twitter, uh, one guy said that he demoed something at PAX uh, one year, um, I believe it was, a, it was a Wii game, he commented on the controller below, and he basically had to tell multiple people how to not hold the controller upside down. Um, yes, this was at PAX, this was at specifically an expo for video games. The second word in King Arcade Expo is Arcade, just want to note. But I think Kenny Arcade is the name of the corner. Am I mistaken? Maybe. Uh, hit the switch, and you'll open the valve. The valve? That's a that's a giant hole at the bottom. Um, I believe there's some other rooms up here. This is, by the way, the playrooms, which we'll get into it. Has, uh, you know, when I don't know where I'm going, it's got one of the most agonizingly irritating, you know, background tracks once we get into the main level. Um, I'm curious how much of this level I actually remember. We'll see. I'm also not sure if they've changed anything to actually help my navigation a bit, because, uh... Yeah, this level is probably the maziest of them all. Uh, it starts off with this, you know, nice easy room. And then we go through this tube. You're gonna get tired of me swimming through tubes later in this level, though, I'll tell ya. Yeah, also, just a note, like... Yeah, there's not many, like, levels after this, actually. Like, even if we check the, the map, it's like, okay, there's, uh, the, you know, the cageways goes there, the Les Soleil to the playrooms, uh, which has things in it. This is mostly just the Dark Soul Gathering, so that we can get a six and continue to the last kind of, um, hub of levels. But I'm pretty sure it's like, we've got... Yeah, there's not too many left. I don't know. There's a lot of backtracking now, again. We're only a quarter of the Dark Souls in, really. Um... But yeah, uh... People not knowing how to hold a Wii controller, like, this was a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. And it's like... Yeah, like... I'm not saying everyone has to know it. But certainly... It's a bit painful when... Especially at a video game expo... People don't quite know how to hold the controller. I guess it's on you as a game developer to mildly. I don't know, man. Is it your responsibility to tell people how to hold the controller? Maybe. You write the software, so. Like, it is sort of on you. But I, I can completely, you know, understand, and especially, you know, as an engineer, it's just like, yeah, like, it's incredibly painful when people 
sort of stumble at the first hurdle and you sort of thought that was assumed knowledge, it's like, oh, you know, can't hold the controller. I'm probably guilty of something as embarrassing as that, so, you know, there's, there's bound to be stuff like that. Uh, my prime, my favorite examples is uh, anything I let's play back in 2010 and I was an idiot. Uh, this is a bit of a weird ledge, but I'm just gonna do the jump anyways, because it's not like Zelda, where jumping up and long jumping are two different heights. This is just one jump that rules them all. Uh, this is a bit of a bizarre bit that you can just climb up all the way around here. And yes, this is the intended level design. I thought you'd like to know. Head up in here, we can hit this lever and it will raise these bits. Which is a little unclear what exactly it's done, but I believe there's a. Uh... Oh, so here you go. Now you don't even have to go down the uh, down the tube. You can just come through here. Keep this in mind, because I swear I got lost a ton, and it's because I didn't recognize which like hard. Who put this here? Who put this here? I didn't recognize which like you know back shortcuts I was reopening. Oh, I love the bass line in this music, by the way. So dirty, it's so full. It's great. Love it. Um, but yeah, they don't 100% make it clear. Like, I thought, oh, how do I climb up there? Which, by the way, you can't climb up anymore from this room. If you're on the ground in this room, you're stuck going, you know, that one way. But, go back in the water, and uh, your vision did not fail you, that was indeed blocking a uh, pipe. You just have to sort of yeah, conceptualize that. Uh, everyone likes killer fan blades. Good thing there's no air meter. Uh, this is a room, by the way. Here's the music, the music's kicked in! More pipe. This is a pipe that goes up above the surface and back down. It's almost Brahms Lullaby, but not quite. And then there's a drill. Splatter noises. That's part of the music, by the way. noise is part of the music and then it's got, like some of the more annoying like parts where you get up and you're like oh it's just it's wet. Oh. Okay, hearing that squeaky toy noise this is genius music man this makes me you know question my sanity as I hear it for an hour Actually, it's a pretty long song. I'm pretty sure it's like 15 minutes. Like, you can go into the game's files, find the wave files, and it's legit long. You're only gonna hear like that intro bit when you suddenly go into the level. Lots of enemies on the side of that. Lots of like, you know, just different like directions in this room. Also, I just want to know, I haven't been prepping, uh, after this point, like, I sort of played, like, a few hours, just made sure that, like, I remembered how to play the game, I guess. I stopped at this point, because I was like, oh, the playrooms, I don't want to figure that one out. And now, uh, I reap and I sow, I'm up to the point where I'm, you know, let's playing it, I'm like, oh, nah. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, kind of annoyingly, the teddy is up here. I explored this hole below bit, and I would just consistently not hit that teddy, which means I would not be warping here. I'd be warping well before with a long swim. And there's lots of little pathways to, to find, so I'm taking this in a bit of a weird order, and you know exactly where to go. Tell me that I'm going a weird order, and... I'll acknowledge that yes, this is a weird order, and I will continue going for the weird order, and that's okay. Got it. 
Yeah, in this past uh, week I've played a few games. I, uh, I finished playing through Quake 2, which I thought I'd mention, and perhaps it's... I don't know, it might be one I play on stream fairly soon. Oh, check it out, by the way. Oh. Oh. Oh, where are you at? Oh, hi. Oh, that was easy. The first one was a lot harder, you know? If anything, the second one was a lot harder because there were two of them. But right now, just one. It's all nice and smooth, nice and easy. Yeah, check it out, it's the third of the retractors. Which makes me feel like I'm going very fast through the game, <laughs> I've already got three of them. Where are the other two levels that have retractors? Uh, the lava ducks and the fog meters. I feel like I shouldn't have guessed because it's literally every one of the asylum levels has a retractor. Hmm. Very fun. One of them's behind a nine gate, by the way. So j just, just for reference, you don't have to get ten, but you have to get nine. Uh, which was how many, how many shadow, how many dark souls? Well, he's missing 25, so you basically have to get 94 of them, I think. Actually, do you? No, level 10's not all 120, is it? It's, what's that? It's 7, 15, 23, 35, uh, 51, 71, uh, 95, yeah, no, it is 95. Yeah, level 10 is all of them. That's good fun. Forced to do backtracking. Uh, you'll see rooms down there. We'll get- we'll find a way to get into them. Thank you for getting up the music loop again. Hello, individual. How are you doing? Yeah, this room's gonna be interesting, like... Knowing how it all links together. I, like, for the longest time as well, you see that there's a, um, a hook there? You can't get to the other side of that hook. You can't exactly climb up from down here, but, uh, this is a long route. This is a long route to get back up. Uh, but yeah, no, I played Quake 2 finally all the way through, and I can definitely say, um, the, the uh, I was gonna say Dimension of the Machine, that's not the, the new expansion name. I forgot what it's called, but the, the new levels are incredible. They've done a very good job of, uh, doing, you know, exactly what they did for Quake 2021, which is use modern level design in creating some real fun scenarios and levels going on. Every single level has something, you know, interesting and unique about it. Uh, I really like how they've done the exact same approach with the Quake 2021 levels, where um, you start off each, like, kind of, um, they're called units in the game, uh, but like, you, you know, you start off every set of levels you know, barren, and that allows the level to kind of start off with the tools that it thinks that would be the most fun. For example, one of them literally starts you off with the BFG, and then just expects you to use the BFG on a handful of, like, clusters of enemies at a time. Um, uh, there's quite a few where they don't use the double shotgun until much later. Uh... Oh, here's one bit that's kind of confusing as well. So the bridge I walked on, where the, the, the bear was, was right there. This is technically underwater. We are in a glass tunnel. And uh, if you go over here... I don't think I went in this room. But this is the bottom, so this is how you get back up. That's how you that's how you do your, your loop around. Uh, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That's how the, the, the routing works, because... Uh, there's a couple of doors I haven't gone into, and I forgot if this was that that was the one I went through. Cool. Because there's two doors underneath here. And this one's important because it's got a lever. I think it just unlocks these doors next to it. Hey. How you doing? There's a guy in there, there's a very big lad in there. A lot of these Asylum levels sort of look the same though, after a while, I don't know man. Cause they've all got these like little, you know, bloody wounds everywhere. Like this is the playrooms man. We should be playing. What are we playing with? Our food? Oh hi there, how you doing? 
It's been a while since like I've gotten a, a weapon. I've got the flambeau, but uh, that is lava. That one cadeau will forever taunt me for a while. And uh, there's no doorway over there. So we're set. We're, we've, we've hit a dead end. And I remember going through this level quite a, quite a bit and just being like, huh, dead end. Yep. I hope you appreciate those screaming noises, by the way. Good fun. <laughs> this level is nightmare fuel. It's just, it's, it's an absolute maze. It's got the music to back it up. Uh, so the bit that threw me off was, uh, like I was like, oh, you can jump off this bridge. And this area down here, you can't access, like from that tunnel. Now, that's not the only bit, but I'm like, okay, like, okay, I'm, I'm standing up here that's not lava, even though it is red looking, it's, it's blood, trust me. Or just regular water, it could just be regular water. Just like the F1 drivers in the Qatar Grand Prix needed, because oh boy were they sweaty. Oh look, it's that pipe from earlier. They were super sweaty, that is a, like... Like, uh, here, here's some random F1 feedback, uh, that race, uh, seemed very grueling on the drivers, definitely had one retiree purely for, like, I'm getting dehydrated, this is like crazy, uh, Esteban Ocon blew up in his helmet, uh, like, as much as, you know, I don't want the sport to be like a breeze, I definitely don't think people should be growing up in their helmets, and that's, like, all these well-established drivers are experiencing this fatigue. That's a, that's a problem that the event is uh, too harsh on them. Partially the weather, it was ultra dry and it was still 38 degrees air temperature, at, like, in the night time. And they're in the desert, so naturally it's gonna happen. Here's uh, the other part of the, the pipe. I don't really know if I want to describe these enemies. But they definitely have less health than uh, their compatriots. And we have this Dark Soul, which I shall just pick up as I'm killing one of them. So what does that put us at? 30! The big 30! Celebrate everyone. How many- Also, how many, uh, how many things are in this level? There's 10 Dark Souls in this level. And we can get 7 more of them. So we can definitely hit level 6 before we even leave this level. Uh, is that... Just more water. That's just water. Yeah, it's a little confusing, like... You know, you see these pipes and you're not 100% sure, like, which pipes are... Like... Water and which ones are... You know, more than that. Okay, so you go into there. Again. That's a bit of a dead end. Where do we go? So then you start exploring the water. And you go, ah! You know, barrels. There's caddos. Got stuff like that. And, uh, this was me for a bit. I'm, like, going around. Okay, there's, like, three barrels in this half. Nothing fancy. Nothing going on. It is very dark. Now, you see a pipe over there. That pipe, I'll definitely explore. But I, I just want to highlight exactly what I did. I'm like, oh, you know, barrel, barrel, uh, barrel, you know, sure, kettle in here. Cool. That's, that's my, you know, plan of action. That's what I was doing this whole time. Because I swear, I spent, like, an hour just wandering around here. Now... Check it out! The climbing ability finally makes a return. <laughs> Everyone likes the good old climbing ability. Yeah, no, I, the Quake 2 levels are great. I love this uh, little water room. There's enemies on both sides, by the way. Uh, so particularly, you'll have to address the ones that are close here, and they'll just pop some hits as you try to climb out. This is probably, like, the money room. Actually, I'm pretty sure that was, like, an extra cado in uh, the original versions. Uh, but it's only, sorry, extra, um, Dark Souls. But, yeah, you can see there's two Dark Souls over there. There's one in here. This is the big money room right here. There's nothing really too much else you can do here, but... Actually, no, there is nothing else you can do here. <laughs> You 
can't climb over to the other side. That wall is just a bit too high, so. So, okay. Now you may think, hmm, doesn't that mean you're actually stuck? You've wandered like that way, you can't exactly leave. You've wandered that way, you can't leave. There's no other doors. Um, yeah, uh, casually you can shoot that. And that's how you continue the level. Now, it's a massive pipe. Maybe I should have guessed eventually, but, uh... I don't know, I didn't really click in my head that that's the thing that you could shoot. And especially, like, when you're in this mode, it's like... You gotta really pitch the camera if you wanna... You wanna know where you're going and shoot where you want. They're really brazen, aren't they? Jeez. Uh, more guys shooting at me from places. Uh, by the way, that fork in the road doesn't lead to two separate rooms. That leads to two pathways. I guess I should have remembered off the top of my head. Yeah, there's caddos when you go left. There's no caddos when you go right. Also, you can look up. And it's very, very dark. Someone needs a flambeur to light up the room. You technically use it to light up underwater, because fire works underwater. <laughs> Uh, this is a bit of an odd ledge. Oh, hi, hi, just let me, let me get out of the water, please, thanks. Uh, but yeah, no, the Quake 2 expansion level's definitely great. If you've played Quake 2 before and you own it on Steam, well worth the purchase. If you haven't played Quake 2 before, I would say playing Quake 2 and that is also worth the purchase. I really liked it, and uh, it's, it's a very high quality port. So, I'm glad it's got all the stuff done. Uh, it also includes Quake 64, which I played, and the Quake 64 levels are fairly good. They're a different interpretation of maybe some of the same areas, but they are different enough and distinct enough and sort of have this kind of Nintendo 64 charm to the textures and things like that. It's quite endearing. Uh, also, just having some, you know, more oversimplified levels. I'll probably, you know, I'll probably play this, uh, Quake 2 at some point next year and, uh, fill you in on how it all is. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it also has both of the, uh, original Quake 2 expansions. And these sort of blow. They're not amazing. They've got a huge problem with the level designs. Uh, one has this huge problem I have. Very similar to regular Quake 2, but it's got this huge problem where uh, they've introduced some uh, regular soldier grunts, but uh, they shoot lasers, and the lasers immediately just lock on on you, like they're aiming at you the moment they see you, start firing, and then you're taking damage. They will put these guys on every single high ledge as possible. You'll walk into a room, uh, and it'll just have like a high balcony, you know, above and around the whole room as well, and you just got enemies hitting you, and you just, I don't know, you got a quick save scum as you just enter and move through areas. There's nothing that really can be done, uh, which is very disappointing. Oh, check it out, we're on the other side of this uh, part here. Couple of enemies though. Look at that. And I'm probably gonna pop it, which is uh, even worse. Unfortunately, I can shoot around for- Oh, I did cop it. Done. You know what that means, I gotta swim it again- Oh, not even swim it, because, uh... Oh, maybe they put the warp on both up and below, just to... Just to make it a little easier to hit. Maybe, uh... Thank you, screaming noises and the music again. You see what I mean? You spend another ten minutes here and you go, ah. Oh. And it's only this area as well, I don't think any of the other areas particularly have a... ...as insane a background track as this one. <laughs> See, that's what makes this game squarely in the Halloween camp. Just this one song. Uh, but yeah, I... I didn't really like those energy weapon guys. It also meant almost all the ammo dropped was for the energy weapons. And there was a very good, um... Uh, weapon that they gave. So it's like, I sort of use that for most of the game. It's like, where's the other, where's the love for everything else? It's not really much, so. The second expansion was arguably a little more annoying because uh, it had um, uh, these turret enemies all over the place. 
it wouldn't have that much health, but again, it's the same thing of you walk into a room and something has just already started shooting at you. And a lot of the times in Quake 2, some of the enemies can really, like, snag off your health without you really expecting it, like the railgun guys, and in this case, uh, turrets that shoot rockets. That gets very annoying. I was like, oh, no way did I kill all the enemies and then lose to, like, a stray bullet. Very important you find this area, though, because two Dark Souls, man. They gotta be yours. Dark Souls are mine. But now I think about it, trying to find 120 is a bit more trivial when they start putting multiple next to each other. Alright, let's get the heck out of Dodge. Swim my way out of here. Water rushing noises. At the very least, I don't think we've seen anything that I've not been able to, like, uncover or things like that, and that might make uh, backtracking much easier. Which will be interesting knowing, like, this game on a second playthrough, when you know what the areas are, generally what the items you need are, like, it does make it a lot easier. Okay. So, let's go through this pipe now, which is a pipe, it's not really a pipe, or maybe it is a pipe, it's a little open, a valve opening if you will. That's right, you can work at Bellevue, Texas. Val, just type Bellevue in Texas or Washington. I think it's the Microsoft works. Thank you, screaming noises again. Just keep making note of it as it happens. This is definitely one of those loading corridors. Uh, oh boy, we got the fun stuff. We'll open the, uh, the switch and view multiple doors. Again, these rooms that aren't necessarily copy-pasted, but oh boy, there's sure a lot of these very identical looking rooms. I will, I will knock the level design on that one. I'm sorry guys, but... The worst part as well, I'm very certain they expanded the pond. Great room, by the way. I'm very certain they expanded upon a lot of these, like, levels. And I'm very certain this one is, like, much larger in this version than original versions of the game. There's only 36 Kados, though. Again, like, why well, you got a room and you populate it? It's very echoey, though. Look at this fine fella chilling over here. Um, ultimately though, I think people, for the Quake 2 release, and uh, I don't know, like, oh, shot on the, the cable. Uh, when people, when I play it, I'll, I'll probably say the exact same thing, but, uh, people would complain if it didn't have the expansion levels. Uh, and, I don't know, maybe there's like some deathmatch maps in there that people actually really like. I've never played really Quake 2 deathmatch against a bunch of people. So, I can't exactly judge the multiplayer uh, too much, other than I know people do like the multiplayer, so that's good. Um, I guess I could play it against bots. Maybe I should. Give that last bit of a play. Uh, I know there's some real snaky corridors here, like, bits that lead back to other bits. Like, you see, I had, like, two options for pathways. Yeah, this door. This, this bit. You gotta make sure you hit that because, uh, you need to be able to, well, yeah, you need the water level to raise. You see what I mean? This is just that corridor. Like, why you got two exits that make me want to miss one of the, um, one of the, uh, you know, an actual important switch. I think this pipe just connects the two rooms. Yeah, it totally does. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna swim back to the other one because I think that pipe goes somewhere different, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go through both. I mean, I still got another four Dark Souls to find. Not as many Caddos as chilling, but you know, when you re-enter the level and all the pots come back and you really don't know where the Caddos that you have gotten and haven't gotten. 
this looks so far out of reach, but it's it's climbable. It's there. Another pipe. I thought you'd never ask. I got the fans, but there's nowhere to, you know. They're not swimming. I don't need them. I thought this room. Oh, hold on. Got some diamond dogs, first of all. Let's look at the far end. Classic. This reminds me, I'm pretty sure there's a room in the, um. I don't know, another the previous asylum level, we'll just say that. There's probably some meaning to, like, how they've designed these rooms, but. Oh, the music keeps coming out, maybe. Although this is probably a, uh, some kind of torture room of some variety. But look at that, three cadeaus just chilling. There's only ten more in this level. Very nice. Oh yeah. This is a secret. Uh, which one is it? Oh boy, which which secret are we dealing with? I'm the invisible man. I'm the invisible man. Incredible how you can see right through me. That's good fun. Listen, if the music is unique purely for this one room, you know it's serious business. Lots of health, but not a drop to drink. This guy's got billiards, man. I'm jealous. It's not exactly how you play billiards, and also not exactly what I was expecting. All, all the sticks to break off. Uh, one last room over here. There's this little playroom with these massive blocks that are totally not even textured. So it's just like, oh, that is a texture. It, it blurs. I'm very certain this room is not in the original versions of the game. I'm very, very certain. You just have to know that this is a block you can push, because there are no other blocks that are not the fire blocks. That's a lie. That is actually a lie. But yeah, like, I remember when I was looking for the Caddos, like, this room, this room, like, just threw me off. I don't think there's anything else to really find, it's just... Yeah. Also, yes! You artists out there, I do recognize you that, uh, the spells H-E-L on the three letters, although it's green, red, blue, so, just, just reverse, just to swap the green and the red, that's good stuff, I spot you, uh, artist, you did a good job, uh, how many things we got left, five caddos left, still lots of dark dolls, this leads around a very interesting wraparound, because one, we gotta keep dealing with these enemies that are just there. Uh, hit this lever, and uh, I believe it moves this hook back. That's right, it's that hook from all the way at this point in the level. <laughs> all of that backtracking. We've probably been in this level for like 40 minutes at this point. It's a long one. And it's well worth your time to get all the things the first go before you have to, you know, backtrack. Very unfortunately. Let's use this thing to flame someone. <laughs> It does a good job, maybe I should have been using it a bit more. Uh, not in a govi, this is just chillin' Dark Soul. The power of the Dark Souls, I embrace it. He is embracing that power of the Dark Souls. We are at level 6! Uh, so congrats, how many more Dark Souls to go? Uh, well that's 35, the number is at, uh... 16! We need 51 to get to the next one. So, yeah, it's at this point you start feeling that all the Dark Souls take their time. Um, but given that we're level 6, you know, that's more areas you can uncover. You can go get to, you know, through that door into that last kind of weird square there. Uh, you can get the insane. If that's a punch or, and that's it, because there's only two 6 gates in the game. Through this door because I wouldn't think you would have asked. Set these fools on fire. 
flick the switch, very important, it lets out that guy. This seems like it would affect uh, something much later in the level, because it does. Um, and then effectively, yeah, we've wrapped back to the beginning via this route. Uh, so time to wander all the way back and go through that other pipe from ages ago. This is what I mean by like, yeah, you're probably gonna go like, a, you know, a way that doesn't exactly pick up everything. Like, you know, walk through all these fans. How are you supposed to know that you're going quite the right way? The only saving grace that you really get is that the enemies aren't respawning until you exit the whole map. Which I can't even guarantee on the... I think the horror of hoodie doesn't respawn enemies. I'm pretty certain it doesn't. I have lots of lingering questions that I don't know how to answer, so... Uh, what else did I play this week? I played a, a PlayStation 1 game called... Um... Uh... Was it Penny Races? Or known as Choro Q in uh, Japan, which is probably a more well-known name because there's more Japanese-only games in that franchise. Uh, but my mate uh, has a long-time memory with a game called Road Trip Adventure on the PS2, uh, which has a very different name in Europe uh, because it is called Choro HQ2. It's the second of the PS2 lineup of games on that console, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's maybe the only one that ever got localized in America and perhaps Europe as well. Those games have very mixed track records. Ah, pun. Um, I like this, by the way. You climb up and there's this whole, like, kind of bathtub up here. Don't exactly know how to explain it. It's not like uh, there's really anything else to look around or explore. I hope you like the color red, by the way. That's what we're seeing in most of the... Well, most of the game, I guess. Set him on fire. We don't need him anymore. Uh, this was a locked door before. So this is down at the bottom of that room earlier. The one that we wrapped back on. Uh, so very important that you hit that just for, to make your life even more confusing when you backtrack to this level. Uh, you can just blow up that guy. Dark soul in here. That, I think there's one more dark soul to pick up in this level. We're definitely making way more progress. I was 15 in the first stream. Uh, this is sort of an interesting thing, but I just want to note in each of the uh, of the serial killer levels, which we'll experience, there's a little triangle pyramid thing. You can exchange three of them to pick up this item and uh, one bonus one for these two on the side. But there are only five in the game because of five serial killer levels. But it's just interesting that like when you go to your you know your map and you see Retractor, just know you get a trade for it. <laughs> you get a trade for it. There is another Retractor. Um, they added that one in um, sort of as a bonus so you can dual wield the Retractors. Um, but in the original version of the game, it was just the one in the later level. I don't think you could trade them here. Uh, Why, well, yes, by the way, we are underneath. We are finally packed to this earlier room. Oh, there's one more Cado left. Dude, if I find that last Cado, I will be mildly happy. But probably, it, you know, we'll probably find it. Continuing onwards. Uh, this is the uh, last of the Cados you can... Sorry, the, not the Cado. This is uh, the last of the Dark Souls you can get. Unless we magically got the ability to get one more. But I'm pretty sure that's the last one. Dark Souls are mine. They are mine indeed. We can double check by clicking on the teddy bear and going, yes, that is indeed all of them. So unfortunately, I cannot get that one last cat -o. But still, that's a lot of great progress uh, in this level for a level that I mildly despise. That sort of went smoothly. But yeah, uh, like when you backtrack through this level, you're going to forget all the different like pathways that, or rather, you know, it, it uncovers itself naturally. But you're going to forget that like casually you've just opened up like a doorway, like, here, because there's all these, like, weird little back rooms and stuff. 
Like, I don't know, you just keep wandering around, so. We've gotten stuff. We've gotten, gotten, you know, the things, so. Uh, time to pick up. Two more Dark Souls? Open the coffin gate. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need to open the coffin gate, yes. Because we're level six, we can do it on this level. Let's do it. Uh, so back and up. Do I remember where the coffin gate was? I think I did. I think I did. Maybe. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's back off the central room. And then uh, you've got to go up to the ledge that's to my left right now. Which means you're going to have to eat some of these enemies away. They are very... They are screaming. I'm not very happy. Let's see if there's flying on those food. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Chora Q on the PlayStation 1. Otherwise known as... Uh, <laughs> they're chilling. Otherwise known as Penny Races. Um, I think it's a toy line. Uh, I'm not too sure if it's broken out of Japan. Or ever did break out of Japan. Because it's an old game from 1996. Um... But, uh, yeah, this is a little, just kind of, arcade racer. It's kind of neat, in the sense of, uh, you start the game, and your car sucks, and it really does control terribly. Um... I think you have to climb up here in order to get to the door. Pretty sure it was up here. Pretty sure. I know we've gone through this path before, but just... I don't remember off the top of my head. I love these guys. Just the way they go under their breath. Shadow man. Something like that. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's great. Uh, but yeah, it's a little little arcade racer. Um, although all the cars are like little, little miniature versions of like real cars, I'd imagine. Like, I definitely spotted a Supra. I'm just, I'm just taking poop on my pants. Ah, oh, you jerks. very unkind of them. Um, but yeah, you start off the game and your car controls very terribly. As you uh, attempt to do the race, you'll at least get third. At least getting third gets you some money. Use the money, buy upgrades, improve your car, figure out which stats you prefer, but the, the honestly there's one good stat. Uh, the, the tires, it's like there's a there's a dirt tire, and there's a road tire, and there's an all-around tire, and it's like, you get to pick your tires before every single race, so why would you not just pick the, the you know, the road tire and the dirt tire? Uh, there's a, um, there's multiple, like, gearboxes, and one of them, it's like, it accelerates a little faster, and one of them has a better top speed, and, uh, on my first kind of goes, I was like, oh, you know, better acceleration is better, because I keep bumping into walls, but then I realized, yeah, I'm not really bumping into walls, because I know the track a bit more, so getting that top speed really pays off. Um, so yeah, there's that item. I'm very certain it was through here. And there's just casually the, uh, yes, it was up here. It's just here. Open that level 6 door, we're putting in the effort, putting in the strength. I'm the Lord of Dead Side. Check this it out. This is an item I rarely use, actually. The end sign is a shield. It does drain your, uh... I know, right? A shield? Whoa! Uh, it does drain your, uh... Your tooth caddo meter as you're holding it. I keep calling everything a caddo. Um... But it's probably, like, a bit useful when you run into a room and you're just like, I just want to, like, start taking out some fellas. Especially, uh, it'll be useful in certain encounters later on. Um, but yeah, you can't exactly use it to get anywhere, so don't uh, don't worry too much about it. Uh, what else we got? Here? Open schism, shut down, piss. Yeah, okay, the use, the use. Time to continue on and open more rooms and levels. A new level means a new way to open doors. And, and more soliloquy, I guess, because everyone loves more soliloquy. Ooh, can we- actually, I'm just curious, what's next? Uh, past the six, I'm pretty sure we can do the next temple. 
That's right. <laughs> Nearly hitting two hours, and I'm like, yeah, let's do a temple. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you'll finally be able to, you know, let me sh fast travel to the end of this uh, long route. Don't have to keep seeing me wander through this tunnel every single time. Ah, uh, that's a seven door. Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, I hope you want to watch me Oops. wander through. <laughs> Whoops! I hope you want to watch me wander through these tunnels a bit more. Um, but yeah, you start off the game very slowly, and it sort of is a little annoying that you have to basically like try the same races over and over again. Um, just to get some money, it does feel like a bit of a struggle at first, but it doesn't take too long. Uh, that first race is really only like two minutes long. Uh, you can definitely... That, that a more, one more T in that word than I should have. Uh, you can definitely get enough money in like 10, 20 minutes. It just feels like you're doing the same thing over and over again. Like imagine Gran Turismo, but you can only do this one high speed ring race because everything else is super tough at first. And you can't just, you know, fully upgrade a super in like, you know, 30 minutes. Uh, but eventually, you know, you get the parts, you figure out how to upgrade the car in a nice way. The, the parts are super simple. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you start winning the races. As you win the races, you unlock some more tracks. And once you've uh, won enough of the tracks, uh, the game goes, yeah, you're now eligible to do the Grand Prix mode, where your butt gets kicked a little more, but every time you come, like, even third, you make a fair bit of money. And you'll finally get that last bit of money, you put in the effort, you win the Grand Prix, and then the game's like, cool. Uh, but then a couple more uh, tracks are unlocked in the special mode, which is nice. And then uh, the Grand Prix mode, you basically just do it again, except uh, two of the dirt tracks are replaced with snow. Actually, one of the dirt tracks is replaced with snow. Um, just one. Uh, but it's mostly this the same. This big. Goes on for miles. Does so go. James must have had a long heap of time on his hands. Yes. So for reference, that warp, if you recall from last stream, from way up earlier, that leads there. Uh, we can get two more Dark Souls apparently here. So I might as well pick them up, because they're the only two Dark Souls left in the other one. Few more caddos, 46 in one go though. Oh, I can't go that way. There you go, jumpy jump. Uh, but yeah, beat, beat the Grand Prix and uh, you'll uh, effectively enter what I like to refer to as the Pilot Wing second game, where it's basically the same thing, but yeah, a little bit harder. In fact, so hard, one guy just bolts in front of you, uh, to which you then realize that there's a secret shop, and in the secret shop there are some extra parts that still cost a fair bit. Buy those up, you'll be able to beat the guy, and win the game for reals. And now I'm trying to do the retro achievement, which involves buying the ultimate parts, which are only available at this point in time. And, uh, they are rather expensive. I don't think I can get up on that ledge, but I'm also curious, where's the Dark Souls it thinks I can get? I... I don't know, game. I don't think I'm able to, to get anything. Everything requires like a 7 at least. I'm gonna doubt you, game, on that one. I'm sorry, man. I don't think you really need to. I don't think like... There's any, like, there's, in the next area... What do you see? Like... Oh, there is a 7 gate to get the Marteau. Yeah, okay. I don't think these two are really gonna help me get towards it, though, because I don't think this temple has uh, anywhere near that many Dark Souls to, to pick up. In praise of the Gad, tattooed trinity, ah, Gad. drumming ineffable power burning through the flesh. My ebon body wrought with arcane designs, drawn by the dead side's dragon breath, and created by the talons of the terrible mother. Dread beauty brings them unto me. Palms to flame, souls to fire, black blood song coursing through the dragon's searing veins. So, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, oops. This is the Temple of Prophecy Marcher. So I guess I need a seven if I'm right here and I want to open this door. Oh well. I mean, we need a returner anyway, so... Uh, 
Yeah, it's another temple. You know the drill. We go through a bunch of stuff. We've now got the warp. You can see, yes, there's, there's 13 Dark Souls and we can find 9 of them. Oh, you know what's the worst part? No, I'd be at 46 or 48 if I managed to get those two, so nah. You need 51 to level up, it's fine. Uh, I hope you think this foot symbol means something. Because it might. I hope you mean this floor symbol might mean something, because it might. Every symbol means something. This level is incredible, because the doors are sphincters. And the sisters keep awaking. How convenient is it that I can fight this thing and I can just like shield myself, you know? That's cool. Uh, yeah, no, I'd recommend Trial Q. Uh, getting all the retro achievements, uh, it's a bit of patience and honestly, it's, uh, the controls are a little bit to wrestle with. Um, but it's got this fun like 1996 PS1 art style. There's something about it like Ridge Racer, a very similar kind of menu design, also reminds me of Sega Rally. It's just like a thing of its time. I'm probably gonna kill as many enemies as I can because I want to explore as much of this place as possible. Also, it's telling me there's nine Dark Souls. I don't know if that's before or after I pick up the item. Even then, there's 13 in this level, so I can't open that door unless I magically got one more from outside this level. So, but I don't think the item. Maybe it does. I could just read up in the in the, the thing spoiling the item for me, but. I'll just go through. This is a rather confusing map, but if I had to explain it, imagine it's like an octagon. There's a room on every, uh, like, diagonal of the octagon, and then there's like a conjoining room. Now imagine there's another octagon inside that octagon. That's, that's the confusing part, is that there's actually two octagons going on right now. Uh, you can also see, uh, return of the, uh, Cylindrical... We can't really do anything in this room. Oh, okay. Just remember, you're going clockwise. So it's the left door every time. But probably following the enemies is a, is a good sign. You'll end up in these uh, large fire rooms where, again, touching lava is bad news bears for you. Maybe it'd be easier if I could just block the fire coming at me. We'll just run across the beams and just be magically well timed. How many Kados we got? 42 on this level? Is that gonna put me over? No, it's not. Yeah, we're making good progress though. This whole game is about making progress. Uh, this is a incredible test of uh, bravery, by the way. I hope you appreciate the timing. It would be very unfortunate if it wasn't well timed. All well placed. Oh my gosh, I, I turned around. No. Whoa. Whoa. All right, drink. There we go. Just like all good platforming, you die, you go back to the beginning. Very good platform, so uh, no, yeah, I'd recommend Troy Q. There are three Troy Qs on the PlayStation One, um, so I think there is definitely more to do than this first game, but uh, definitely. I what I was surprised is that there was a good like track variety. They had some off-road courses. Uh, there's like a dirt stadium. There's um, some snow. Uh, the uh, even all the road circuits, it's like they really only had like three, like, just circuits. Road with grass on either side, it's like, they got some good visual variety going on. There's some good jams, I might actually pull one of the songs into my intermission music uh, as well. That's, that's a good vibe, it's, it's, it's a good time. Um, I'm very nostalgic for this time period that I didn't really play too many games for, but, um, ah, here we go. This is what I needed to press. Sisters awake. Which the sisters awake. Nice. Uh, unlike the last one, I don't think there's particularly a trial that requires you to hit like six buttons. I'm pretty sure this is just for like dark souls. You can wander to the end of the, the you know the temple if you want and actually pick up the required items you need. Although, again, as I mentioned, 95 dark souls required to beat the game? 
you're probably going to want to start like grabbing them, you know, when you can. Yeah, as long as I don't awaken the sisters as I'm climbing this. Oh, I can hear my chest bumping already. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's probably the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me all day. Uh, did I play anything else this week? Oh, I played 102 Dalmatians on the PS1, which might be another one I actually want to kind of showcase on stream, because I was kind of... Uh... I mean, I, I don't know, I play a bunch of, like, licensed games just to, like, figure out what's what. This one is weirdly good. It's, uh, developed by, uh, or it's credited to Crystal Dynamics, but then Wikipedia credits it to Toys for Bob. Uh, might be true, maybe both are involved. Uh, 102 Dalmatians is a, uh, collectathon platformer, um, and, uh, it's based on the live-action Glenn Close starring sequel to the live-action Glenn Close starring 101 Dalmatians. This is 102 Dalmatians. Not to be confused with another PS1 game, 101 Dalmatians 2, which is based off the Disney Toons, uh, animated sequel to 101 Dalmatians, where, uh, one of the dogs, Patch, is, like, it's basically Bolt. It's basically Bolt. Except the, the dog is in the right the whole time, for some reason. Um, I, <laughs> I'm ripping on 102 Dalmatians, sorry. It's been, I can't even recall 102 Dalmatians at all. All I remember is, uh, weirdly, like, there's some differences between the live-action one and the original, uh, version. Which I guess, isn't that always the case with all these, like, Disney remakes? But, like, this came out in 1996, so... Uh, this is a weird room, by the way, and this is what I mean by, like, entering the, the, the octagon. I love how there's, I'm pretty sure there's two buttons on the other side as well, and there's just different sisters awakening every time. I'm like, nah, man. Gotta press the buttons. I gotta press the buttons. The buttons of my life soul. Must press button. <laughs> Hopefully the shield protects me. I think it actually is working to a good degree. Look at that, you don't even have to play the game. Too bad my boss about to go down. Look that charging takes its time as well, I swear. It does the damage, but yeah, <laughs> you're charging for a bit. You want to do the stuff? There we go. Uh, so I don't really know much about the film. So what about the game itself? Well, it's fairly good, fairly competent. Like it's it's definitely a kids' babby game. There's really not much that kills you, um, and there's zero bottomless pits. And I'm not saying 101 Dalmatians needs a bottomless pit. I'm just saying. Uh, by the way, this room has a lot of setup. Like, you press all these buttons, and you're just gonna come back here later. But I love how this doesn't actually lead back into that previous room. I'm now on the inside, like, of the octagon, which is sort of not really where you need to be. Oh, that's fun, by the way. Whoa! I'm probably gonna work my way back to the outside. I don't think the inside hexagon... Um, will get me anywhere. I know it looked like I can continue to the next room, but... I think all the pizzazz is on the outside here. There we go. Watch out for swinging... Pendulum things on the outside. They are guillotines. Guillotines? Guillotines. I don't know how you say it. Uh, I think this is just a leap. Yeah, it is totally just a leap. Okay. Through the sphincter! Into, uh, that's right. Another, like, little transitional room. Ouch. Hit by Thor's mighty hammer. I like that metal grate. More transitional room. 
Uh, yes, I guess I need to jump over there. <laughs> this is a little ledge you can climb across. Very nice. Um, but yeah, so how's the game itself? Well, it's basically uh, 16 levels broken up into uh, four chapters of four levels in a boss fight with uh, Corella just doing different stuff each time. Each level is weirdly different. It has different uh, kind of aesthetics. They don't reuse any. Um, generally about the same vibes uh, for the most part, but some have like a different like challenge going on in the level. Very nice. Um, in about half the levels, you uh, come up with some new and inventive way to kill uh, the two brothers. Uh, are they brothers? I think they're the two brothers, yeah. Um, there's always a pun involved as well. Uh, and you can play as one of two characters. as a male puppy voiced by actual Frankie Muniz, by the way. Uh, and a female puppy, uh, who I forget the voice actress, but a lot of the people in the game are like, decently high profile? Uh, this is going to be a fun jump. There we go. Um, so I'm like, okay. Uh, also, don't like the character you are. Hit select and it does the most amazing transition. Uh, where the entire screen just barrel rolls. It rotates around. And uh, it then, you're just the other character. Without hitting a loading screen, without hitting anything. The levels are decently big and they load in fairly quickly. Uh, the boss fights are fairly decent. I guess the only thing really against the game is, again, it's it's very easy. It's, it is very, very easy. Um, it's got one kind of annoying part, which is uh, in order to 100% the levels, you need to collect all uh, the stickers. One of the stickers involves collecting all 100 bones on the level. And uh, collecting all 100 bones is a pain because in every level, some of the bones are buried underground. And the only indicator is if you hold circle and follow the arrow path that appears telling you where the, the the thing is buried except it only shows you exactly where it's buried uh console pc version uh, i played the playstation one version i know there's a dreamcast version as well um oh, unless you're talking about shadow man in which case i'm playing um uh this is the pc version the night dive pc version as well but i am playing a um uh, with a controller so controller does lead to uh smoother camera movement for video streams i feel so my aim sort of sucks though. I do feel more confident in my platforming with a controller. So, um, yeah, no, I would definitely like. I would give 102 Dalmatians an actual go. Like, if you if you want to play a fairly competent like 3D platformer, that's that's a remarkably good one. I was surprised. I have like my tier list of like the Disney tie-in games for specifically PS1 and uh, uh, only one of them. I'm pretty sure I put uh, Toy Story 2 up there and I wouldn't, I put this on the same tier as the Bugs Life 1. Some people would love the Bugs Life 1 more. Uh, I'm gonna have to come back for all these, uh, I'm gonna have to come back for all these uh, pots because there's no way you're gonna pick up all those as you're walking along. They give you a bit of a freebie room. Uh, I played this on PS4, loved it, couldn't get into it on PC for whatever reason, despite being the same game. I mean, yeah, if you played it on PS4, you would have played... Did you play the, um... Like, the remaster version on PS4, or the, uh... The, I guess, is, do they have the PS1 version on the PS4 as, like, a PlayStation Classic? Because the PS1 version... Pick up 102 Dalmatians cheap, have a working PS1 and Dreamcast. It's... It's definitely decent. I think it's, it's like a, just a decent five hours. Um, is it incredible? No, but it's definitely like, it's a very strong, like, it's well presented. Like, it's more than I expected out of the license game. And especially given that there's some, like, more average ones. I think I ranted about uh, the uh, Aladdin game on the PS1 by Argonaut. And I'm just like, that game has so many problems. Yeah, the night dive version? Ah, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're playing with mouse and keyboard, maybe there's uh, some differences. Um, there may also be some differences, like, depending on when you played it, because uh, they added in some, like, last-minute content December last year into this night dive release. Uh, so, uh, maybe there's some quality of life things that have made, uh, that will make your, your life a bit easier as well in a replay. Uh, for example, um, they give you a tip telling you actually what things you can get in each level at each point in time. 
Oh, that was a noise. Um, but yeah, so like, there's a little indicator saying that of the 13 Dark Souls, or 12 Dark Souls remaining on the level, I can pick up eight of them. It's like, that's very nice to have, just, you know, if you're new or even, um, even sort of returning and you don't quite know what the, you know, what's available at a point in time. Uh, there must be... I mean, I'm here in the Dark Soul. I know it's in the middle of it. Oh, because I'm blind. I'm blind. I know, because you see those, like, little pedestals. There's a pedestal in, like, every single one of these corner rooms. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's a... a bit later of an item. Play PC first, so yeah, I think that was the issue to the edge. This was the last game I completed before my PS4 gave up the ghost. Rip, rip the PS4. Pull one out. We lost a good one. This is a fun room because it's just, it's just, it's just immediately awakened. They don't care. They they're out for blood. Yeah, just to reiterate, this I don't know. I really do uh, enjoy this night dive version. Um, I never grew up with Shadow Man originally. Um, it's, it's certainly not a game I would have imagined, like, is a Metroid-style game, but I'm glad that, like, it is, and it's sort of, I don't know, like, coming out before Metroid Prime, it's like, eh, you know what, like, they got some ideas. They got some things. Uh, they've got this pedestal, and I'm a little concerned where this is gonna lead me. I'm pretty sure this allows you, one, to get a Govi Dark Soul up here, right at the beginning of the level, by the way. We've warped all the way back to the top. Uh, but also, there we go, a box. So that you can shortcut to the end of the level. Very convenient. Very, very convenient. I have not died to platforming. I'm very happy. Uh, but, very convenient shortcut that you definitely want to activate. Drop down. And, I'm not in a corner room just yet. I completely lost my bearings. I know I'm moving forward, I'm just, like, I, I, I said earlier, it's like this... Actually, it's less an octagon, more a s square. 3D Metro Rain is probably how I describe it. A pulpy story. Oh yeah, the pulpy story is great. Yeah. Lots of lore, lots of, like, explanations for things all around. Uh, so we are now right back at the beginning of the level. Like, this is the archway, right back to the beginning. Good thing I got it. That's not my shield. That's where I need to be. Oh, that yeah. Yeah, the the voice acting's got that fun level of like campiness that I really like. And there's a lot of it, which is good fun. I forget if the. I think the voice acting was like, sort of there on the Nintendo 64 version, which is very surprising that they managed to pull that one off. Uh, so yeah, we're back at the beginning, which means, uh, I think, if anything, and I'm going the wrong way, uh, I think, if anything, I need to go around back to that one room that led to the inside. Unless this is, uh, back to the beginning. Yeah, okay, that's definitely the beginning. Uh, let's actually go... Nah, let's go forward, let's go forward. <laughs> but don't make this level easy to navigate though. Like definitely, it's a square, but there's all, there's all these rooms all around. Uh, was there anything that I could press in this room? Or is it actually like, No Man's Land? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything in here. I think it actually might be No Man's Land. I'm not Shakespeare lol. Uh, but compared to other games of the era, it's a big improvement. It is, true, it is. There's a lot of like, Especially, um, like, I, I I played Resident Evil 1 on this channel, and I understand Resident Evil 1 is meant to be very campy and B-movie-esque. Uh, but it's still one where it's like, yep, they definitely, you know, didn't put effort into voice acting. Probably by intention, and I enjoyed it, but, hey, it's good, it's good to have a game like, you know, go for it. I'm actually, I am impressed that this game doesn't get the, uh, like, the public recognition 
like, I guess, I hope this night dive release, you know, really helps. What brilliant timing. I'm glad that timing happened. Shit. <laughs> well, good thing I got the wolf, I guess. Maybe I'll have a stab at going the other way. Um. There we go. All the cutscene voice acting was in the Nintendo 64 version, even some of the in game voice clips. Impressive for those little ass cartridges. And then it took so much space on your control pack. It. Yes, it did use your control pack, yes. You have to do the fun thing as well as, like, swapping out, uh. Did you have to swap out Rumble for this one? You might have been young for it, but it's good that you enjoyed it nonetheless. Ooh, ooh, no damage. Um. But yeah, oh yeah, I'm I'm actually curious like how much space like the cartridge size was and yeah, how much space on the memory pack. I'd imagine counting each individual cadeau has a lot of memory work. Um because, yeah, it did count every single cat up. Maybe that's why they did contract it to 512. That's the perfect number for, uh, how many bytes are we dealing with? Nine bits? Or no, it'd be on and off to 512 individual cat -o, so it's not nine bytes, it'd be, uh, 512 divided by eight. 33? No, 36? 36 bytes. Track a little cat No, it's not that wouldn't be 36, that'd be that would actually be 64. It would, yeah. Uh, I only got this game because the Nintendo 64 team had a huge four or five page review of the Praise of the Hell. Yeah, there's there's probably some games that I've I've got where it's like I just saw it in, in marketing and yeah, the massive front page cover. That does wonders for sales. Here we are, finally, the track back to the, uh, the center of the level. I like how I didn't go this way, thinking that this was leading to a side cut, only to then later realize that this is indeed the way to go forward. Or, alternatively, I just don't know where I'm going. Because this leads to the inside, like, <laughs> same room, but I was over on that side. You can pull that lever, don't. Don't right now. Don't do it. Everyone likes activating pedestals and awakening every sister. Maybe they all activate them. Nope, nope. They're just activating one at a time. It's just, it's just we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> Uh, last game I, I played a bit before, um, uh, in the last week, I got back into, I hadn't finished entirely Forza Motorsport 7, which was the last mainline Forza Motorsport. Uh, I have the PC version, um, and, uh, yep, it's not for sale anymore. Uh, I played through most of it, though. I really did enjoy it. Uh, gotta head off. Good luck with the game. Thanks, man. See ya. Have a good one. Um... Yeah, I enjoyed most of the most of Forza Motorsport 7. It definitely like it got been there, done that. I've been through all these tracks over and over again. I, I sort of get it eventually, um, but I did want to kind of go back and just finish it off, collect all those cars. Really, you know, feel like I did it, and remind myself about how the game was because uh, it's been a while. I haven't played it in 4K. I haven't played it on my 4070 Ti, which it sort of performs about the same. It doesn't really perform. I, I mean, I guess it performs better on getting a very, very stable 144 frames a second at 4K. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, made me again, you know, reiterate, I mentioned it <laughs> last stream. Uh, it's not that, like, new cards can't do 4K high refresh rate. It's that new games are so crazy demanding. Because again, as uh, I mentioned last week, the 1080 Ti, everyone praised that card so to crazy extremes because it was an incredibly, you know, powerful card and for a very good price, which NVIDIA's just never done again. We all recognize that. That being said, new cards keep getting better. We're at that point where the 4060, NVIDIA's current entry, in quotes, a uh, level offering, it still costs a fair bit, um, is more powerful than that 1080 Ti. And at much better power efficiency as well. And it supports other features like AV1 encoding and all the RTX shenanigans. Like, it's, it's definitely a 
it does the job card. The only thing we're really complaining on is pricing and also ha ha memory bus. I hope you like uh we, yo dog, we we put a labyrinth in your labyrinth. This may seem very confusing that I'm magically in a labyrinth, but just trust me, it's like this is just one of the rooms of the square. The sister's awake. Yeah, it's the same music oh, as the last yeah. temple. That is just a secret, just walking like here, by the way. What was that secret? Let us look. Oh, you can play as Netty! Sound-wise, I don't think you're Netty. Definitely aren't Neddy sound wise. It's kind of fun though. Good fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other reason why I just want to remind myself of Forza Motorsport 7 is because the actual new Forza Motorsport, uh, terribly titled Forza Motorsport, and I'm going to now call Forza Motorsport 2023 for the longest time, um, is uh it's coming out like tomorrow like on the 10th i think if it's not the 10th it's the 11th but very very soon in october uh finally out um a little bit expensive i think they're charging 100 bucks for it Ooh. and also even more for uh, the the premium which is sort of worthless and the absolutely i think it's 150 australian bucks for the super, super deluxe which doesn't exactly come with everything still it's most of the things, and you never know with post game content. Uh, it's very hard to catch up with these, so you know what's the value? You, you just get the extra game pass and you play it for a month and then you're done. Uh, not done with the whole game, but just, I, I don't know, that's what I do. But play it on Game Pass if I really want to play it, day one, and then uh, just buy it later. Finally, after entering so many sphincter doors, uh, we have finally, you know, arrived at the final area. Which fortunately, there's no puzzle. You just stand on the end. You've got you've got your your jazz. You've got the stuff, the goods. Rise to the top, and we shall grab and achieve all the purposes. And I don't know what that means. We now have the ability to. <laughs> touch with our hands and stand with our legs the lava as well as this wonderful back tattoo again um but yeah we now have the ability to march on the lava keyword is march i don't think we've come across too many of these but uh, if you spot any lava that you can swim through don't you can't do that yet this is a foot this is not your whole body it's a foot uh so yeah so that sort of opens up this whole level because now you can sort of just cut to wherever you want. Now that you can walk on the lava, as well as other things all over the place. Like, you'll, you'll spot, like, all of these levels. It's like all of these Dark Souls are suddenly available. Because you can now just walk on lava. Particularly even this level, all the remaining Dark Souls, it apparently claims you can get. Wow. 15 Dark Souls in the... We still got more Dark Souls in here. Did, did it show more Dark Souls? It did! There's one more in here! It said... It, it was counting to 11 before, now it's counting to 12. I can... Wait, hold on, how many left? Six? Oh, dang. Yeah, okay, no, I'm too short anyways. <laughs> oh well. Still, so, walking on lava is like it's such a great feeling and again it's that metroidvania backtracking it's now the idea of okay now i can go through all these levels and figure out where i can walk on lava which is a lot of them it's a lot of stuff that you can suddenly go to um for example that uh lever that i said you can't touch don't touch it well not a problem anymore because where is it going to put you Drop that lever, do the run around. And 
get this wonderful ability with the Dark Souls because it's my wonderful. So I do enjoy For Forza Motorsport 7. There is a degree of like, man, it's a bit corporate, ain't it? Because it doesn't have like it's got some music, but it's very generic on the menus. It's not really much personality, but. Hey, when I put my head down and I start playing a driving game, it does a very, very fine job with a very, very wide variety of cars and tracks. And I can't ask for too much more. I also appreciate being able to adjust the track lengths or the race lengths um, to generally uh, from 5 minutes to uh, like 20 minutes. I, I like the 20 minute range. Uh, and then you can sort of make it like an hour if you want. And a little bit longer for the endurance races, if you want to. Um, it's pretty alright. The multiplayer works okay when I played it. Uh, I don't have too much more to say. It's it's a car driving game. And I don't really know anything about the the new one. Some people call it Forza Motorsport 8. I'm calling it 2023. Uh... I don't really know much about it other than, yeah, it's, uh, it's more car driving. Um, it will definitely look fancier. I believe it runs way harsher on computers, but... A lot of these car driving games scale decently. They've got, like, you know, good amounts of settings, and they generally look good for what they are. Let me try and figure out which which areas I haven't been to. I think this is you know, this is one where I lowered the bit and I can't climb back up. You can see there is a bridge there. There is definitely something to get onto from out there. And this is where I went through. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Because I know there's a switch somewhere. And that switch will open up a bit of a bit more of this level. My brain's feeling like it's just this room. Particularly up there. But no, this is where I was earlier. We'd be dropping. Well, let's keep exploring around. I ain't leaving this level until I pick up all these goodies. I mean, you're here in a dark soul. I think that's the only one you can't pick up. Uh, yeah, might as well just walk through the level normally again. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I just played like all these games here. Um, I need to I need to play another spooky game casually. I played a simulacra a few weeks ago, and uh, I gotta come up with a spooky one. I feel like uh, I want to play a man in Medan. It's a bit of an inside joke with my mates. I keep noting uh, that one guy. He's the man of Medan. Just keep saying that. I don't know. I don't know much about it other than uh, I'm surprised that there's not more games doing like the real digitized actors um, approach to like games. I feel like there's so many like games that could do fairly all right with. Hey, didn't drop off this time. Uh, there's so many games that like could do with a bit of like celebrity appeal. Um, although I, I am reminded of a. Does anyone remember Crime City Rock A? Like earlier this year, I I do not like. I saw an article basically saying like that game's been memory hold. I'm not too sure if that's the uh, the phrase I'd use, but certainly no one played it, and therefore no one even knows what it's like. What it is, I have a feeling it's like Payday, where you are intended to just constantly play the same levels over and over again, and that's what reviewers. Criticized, they were like, not only is it lacking content, it's also boring and like It's like a trifecta of this ugh, bad design, boring design, and poorly implemented design. That's not a fun combo. Well, I'm definitely wandering through these rooms. I haven't quite seen the uh, the switch I'm looking for, but trust me, I'm. Uh, 
bet you it exists somewhere. Lava is no problem, but unfortunately the, uh... Oh, that's just so bad. Yeah, the lack of finding anything is uh, definitely getting to me. Where is the anything? Uh, I guess this would actually be the easiest way to get back up. But it's kind of nice to like not have to worry about like falling in lava anymore, uh, for the most part. It's kind of interesting as well, because it's like, man, you know, like, you think the lava would be like a, a big threat, a big danger, but nah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I can't get that just yet. That makes me feel like getting all these Dark Souls is probably a bit, you know, ahead of the curve. I don't quite know if uh, I have all the abilities. Yeah, I can walk on lava, but I'm not 100% sure if, uh... I, I could even pick up that Dark Soul. Because I still think I need some items. There's definitely one under me right now, this very second. Uh, so let me just walk to the end here, just to guarantee that there wasn't anything I, like, missed. Ah, these things! Yeah, let's get them. Is this... No Kettos. Oh, that's a little disappointing, isn't it? Nothing at the end, nothing at the end. Oh well, oh well. Uh, keep exploring around, mental note that room a bit ago. We got this corner, which I got a Dark Soul, there's still more, you know, things on the sides. I am amazed I didn't kill you yet. But there's nothing uniquely in this room, because it's just a room. And then we're back here. I know 100% there is a switch. I just don't know where that switch is activated. And if I can't figure it out, well, you know, we'll just figure it out later. Because I know I need to come back with another item. And, uh, yeah. I think I do. There's plenty of Dark Souls available in, you know, like, how many do I need? I'm at 44, I need 7 more. It's like, oh, look, there's... Still says there's 2 here, which is a bit of a stretch, but, like, there's 2 in the Temple of Life. I can actually explore... The gateway now by the way I was putting it off for so long because there's all that lava there and now I can walk on the lava hey scratch one I know there's this one maybe we'll call it there I think that's all the ones I can pick up and unless it's up here we'll, 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 we'll check the inside route one last time Okay, we're at the maze. Ooh. There you go, that's actually worth it. I would have been kicking myself, it's like, oh, there's Kettos in this. Pretty sure I've opened up all these other ones, though. And yes, this is the only path up from the maze, so... It's a bit of a dark room, ain't it? A little bit dark. And then we're up the top here, so... I think that is... I don't know, it sort of looks like there's a button up there, but it's not. Um, otherwise, yeah, like, I was mentally thinking that there'd be a button up here, but nah, so... I don't know, I, I'm thinking it's just a... Uh, bit at the end. I don't see any button around any of these rooms. Don't particularly think there was one on the inside here. Like, that's definitely the pedestal where you climb up, so... Nothing really there. It's not chilling on the inside. Nope. 
I'm feeling that that might actually be it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling that's it. Oh well, I think we're good, so let's... Uh, let's walk back to the Prophecy of Chamber and call it a stream. I'm at 45 of the, the Dark Souls now, that is 30. That's a whole quarter done in just this one stream. We're at 260 of the Caddo's, which I don't know my fractions, so... Uh, I think that's around 40%. Feels about 40%. Maybe it's a little shy of 40. Uh, but yeah, we've got uh, multiple new... One new weapon, actually. Or two, or, well, that's, that's a shield. It technically counts, I guess. A uh, bunch of new abilities. The ability to climb waterfalls. The ability to... This, you know, the Soleil. Uh, two more attractors. All this stuff. And we've still got a fair bit of map to go. Don't don't feel like it's over just now. Just because I'm at, you know, that Temple of Prophecy. Because uh, there's still... A handful of levels to go. And definitely all this uh, live side stuff. So, tune in next week. Same bat time, same bat hour. How many hours have I been playing this? 437, wow! Um, and uh, yeah, we'll continue on the uh, the Shadow Man. So until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you stuck around this long, uh, thank you very, very much for, for doing it. Leave a comment if you enjoyed bits of it. And uh, if you want to know that I'm streaming again, uh, just, um, you know, you can follow on Twitch, where I stream on every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. I mean, it's been daylight time for another week. Uh, and uh, if you like YouTube or you miss part of the stream, you can just view the VOD later back on YouTube. Every single VOD's on YouTube, so uh, lots of stuff to watch if you haven't watched stuff already. Lots of different games as well. Uh, hopefully the same annoying me if you enjoy me. Oh my goodness, hell. Um, but yeah. Uh, other than that, have a good week, everyone. Have a, have a good bit. Play some games. Are there any announcements? Oh, 3D Realms announced a bunch of stuff. Yeah, give that presentation a watch, the, the Realms Deep. Oh, and they announced the Game Awards for, like, in seven weeks' time. It's, it's ages away, so I'll let you know closer to that date. See ya, everyone. Peace.